for the masses. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. I need your help to get to the year 1985. Listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Good evening, Fade to Black. Bespoke Radio for the Masses. Yeah. How you doing? How are you doing? Today's Monday, August 23rd, 2021. 236 days into the new year, only 139 days left. We are live from a brand new bunker. Yeah, man, we moved. But it's still somewhere in the middle of nowhere. You ain't ever gonna find out. <laughs> It's, it, it is indeed a total undisclosed location, but it is beautiful. It's still in transition, but we're almost there. I'll tell you about it in a minute. I would like to welcome everybody listening all around the world, all across the United States. Hither and thither, to and fro, back and forth, up and down, east and west, north and south, far and near. This is Fade to Black for KJCR, the Game Changer Network, and KGRA, the Planet Race Hobbs. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. What is cracking, everybody? How you doing? All right, it's really dark in here. It is. It's black. It's, it's dark. I don't have any accent lights up. You know, I had the pin bars, the pin spots, and things above me before. I'll get to all of that eventually, but for now, you know, and I hung some guitars up behind me and there's uh, much more to do, but, but I got every, you can hear the echo, hear that echo in here. It's a, it's a big room and uh, tile floor, right? So, well, I can roll my chair around, but uh, I've got uh, all of the soundproofing and things uh, stacked up and ready to mount just couldn't get to it, but uh, so you'll have to deal with the echo. Sounds kind of cool though. It's uh, but it it it's nice in here. Okay, so uh, just deal with that. But I got everything up and running. Um, we uh, did a test run uh, over the weekend at Making Contact, and if you were there, that was really cool. Mark Sims and Captain Ron and. And, oh, man, Danny. Danny was incredible. Uh, Danny Sheehan. So uh, that was amazing. And I got the studio basically up and running uh, for that. And, whew, fa. It's been a lot of work. And it's weird because it's so dark in here. I've got the spotlights in front of me up here. But behind it, that's all black. The cameras that are here in front of me, I can't see them. It's... uh, it's, it's bizarre. It's bizarre. But anyway, it's cool. It's um, it's a little bigger than the previous bunker. And now my door is on my left uh, before the bunker door was on the right. Now it's on the left. And, and now I've got computers over here on this side instead of on this side before. So I'm, I'm, I'm a little backwards right now. But by tomorrow night, it'll all be good. All right. Now, we've got uh, a huge week on the show this week. And uh, tonight is a very a very special broadcast and an important one. 
uh, because tonight we have John Sumple, the director, and executive producer Jack Roth joining us tonight to introduce their new film, Extraordinary, The Revelations. We did a premiere of the trailer over on our YouTube channel about an hour ago, so you got a chance to see the trailer. And if you haven't, uh, head over to the YouTube channel. You'll see it right there, and you can check out uh, the trailer. And I'll bust out uh, the trailer in social media um, in uh, maybe after the show tonight. I've been so buried in getting everything prepped. Now, you know, tonight John is coming into us from um, out of the country. Jack is on the other side of the country. We had to get all of that set up. And with everything else that is going on, um, and I'll, I'll talk about that in, in just a minute, but we've got some crazy stuff happening in our UFO community. I'm very excited about all of it. And then tomorrow night, Scott Walter is back with the stones. That's right. And uh, that's going to be a great show tomorrow night. And uh, Scott is always great on the show, but he's got a lot of stuff that is happening right now. And I just can't wait. It's going to be another great night with Scott Walter. And then Wednesday night, Anjali is here for the first time. And she did her press conference last week at uh, the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C., and which I did see. She was also part of making contact over the weekend, and my email was blowing up, my cell phone is blowing up, that we have to, to get her on the show. And uh, so there you go. It'll be Wednesday night. Anjali is here. It's an amazing story, and I've, you know the show was called UFO Base in the Mojave, right? Okay, so, and it just takes you right back, right? The Hesses, the Mojave incident, right? And what all those shows we did with the Hesses and Ron Felber uh, so many years ago when that book came out, an incredible book, an incredible story, is this tied into it? Well, you can't help but think about that, right? That there is a connection here. So I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it's going to be a great night. Anjali is with us Wednesday night. And then Thursday night, open lines. It is fader night all night long. And, and now this is the other thing. My studio clock is normally right in front of me lit up. It's not. It's now over here. So you're going to be, every time you see me look, I'm checking the clock like I am now. Normally, I can just glance up and, <laughs> oh, man, my eyes. I can't even read my computer clock down here in, in uh, the toolbar. No, I can't even see it. Follow me on Twitter at J Church Radio. Follow me right there on Twitter at J Church Radio. Hello to everybody out there. I, it's been a busy day. Um, and, and for, the, for those of you like, you know, YouTube, I haven't done anything on Facebook yet, um, or Twitter with, uh, the new trailer or, or anywhere else, but hello to everybody in the chat rooms and, and over on YouTube. And of course, Spreaker, hello to everybody. The sandbox is hashtag F2B. All right. I confess I blew up J church radio phone demanding he have Anjali on ASAP. Oh, that's Eric. He thinks he has something to do with this. Yeah. Eric, she's on the show because of you, bro. She's on the show. Let's get to the breaking news. The fastest orbiting asteroid in our solar system has been discovered. I'm looking at the wrong camera. I'm supposed to be looking at this camera, right? This is the one I'm pointing at. Okay, that's YouTube. This is, and that's okay. Okay, all right. So I need to be looking at this one. Should I move it over? It's weird. I'm looking in the wrong direction. Let me move this over. Now, if I do this now, now I'm looking at the camera. Okay. The fastest orbiting asteroid in our solar system has been discovered. The rock known as 2021 PH27 completes one lap around our sun every 113 Earth days. That's the shortest orbital period of any known solar system object except 
the planet Mercury, which takes about 88 days to loop around the sun. However, 2021 PH27 travels on a much more elliptical path than Mercury does and therefore gets considerably closer to the sun, about 12.4 million miles at its closest approach compared to Mercury at a distant 29 million miles. Absolutely incredible. Incredible. Uh, Now check this out. The U.S. spacewalk outside the International Space Station originally planned for tomorrow, August 24th, with NASA astronaut Mark Vandehey and JAXA Japanese, JAXA Space Agency astronaut uh, uh, Akihiko Hoshidi has been postponed due to a minor medical issue involving Vandehey. They say that the issue is not a medical emergency. And that makes you wonder what it is. Toothache? Would that stop a spacewalk? That's not an emergency. Is it something else? What would delay a spacewalk? Well, they say the spacewalk is not time sensitive and crew members are continuing to move forward with another station uh, work right now. The teams are assessing the next available opportunity to conduct the spacewalk following the SpaceX CRS-23 cargo resupply launch planned for August 28th and upcoming Russian spacewalks. Their preview briefing uh, for today was also rescheduled and will be announced at a later date. Let's get the show cracking. Happy birthday to today, Barbara Eden. Are you ready for this? Barbara Eden today is 90. Wow. Wow. You know, when you, when, when you go back, let me say something about Barbara Eden. There were a lot of shows that came out at the same time featuring um, leading ladies like Barbara Eden. You had Bewitched, right? You had uh, the Mary Tyler Moore show the Dick Van Dyke show. These shows all came out at the same time. And, and I, I was a Barbara Eden fan. I like bewitched, right? I did Elizabeth Montgomery. I did. It was a great show. And the Dick Van Dyke show with Mary Tyler Moore was, was great. But, uh, I'm going, I dream of Jeannie. Happy birthday, Barbara Eden, 90 years old. Now listen to this. It's kind of messed with me today. Rick Springfield is 72. (laughs) 72. Incredible. Guitarist Dean DeLeo of the Stone Temple Pilots today is 60. Rick Springfield is 72. Incredible. Our dead guy's birthday today is, I need a moment of silence, please. Keith Moon, 1946 to 1978, died at the age of 32. Keith was, of course, the drummer for The Who. He was noted for his unique style and his eccentric, often self-destructive behavior and drug addiction. And TVs out of hotel windows. (laughs) But he was a great drummer. He died on September 6th, 1978, of a drug overdose. Happy birthday, Keith Moon. On this day in history, 2006, who, uh, Kaz, look at Rick Springfield, 72 years old. Is That's just incredible to me. Incredible. On this day in history, 2006, Natasha Kampusch, an Austrian teenager who was kidnapped at the age of 10, escapes from her captor. Wolfgang Pricklop Pricklop Pricklapil Pricklapil I guess that's how you say it. Well, it doesn't matter. He's dead like Momo, right? After eight years of captivity from being kidnapped, she escaped. And then shortly after her escape, Wolfgang committed suicide. There you go. Fader fact. Here you go. Now check this out. A sea lion named Rhonda 
once escaped from an urban zoo in Providence, Rhode Island, and she was never recovered. She got away. She made her way through a few park lakes. They were chasing her. Made her way through a few park lakes, traveled two miles over land, scaled small walls, and got to a river that flowed into a bay and eventually the ocean, and she was gone. And that is your fader fact. I read the whole story today. It's absolutely incredible. Tonight, we have very special guests. John Sumpel and Jack Roth are joining us to introduce their new film, Extraordinary, The Revelations. Now, this is an important film, and there's a lot going on in and around it. We'll be discussing all of that tonight with John and Jack. And then tomorrow night, Scott Walter is here Wednesday nights on Jalous Fader Night with open lines all night long. All right. See, when I get, when I, when I tone down my voice, when I bring it down, it doesn't echo because it's not bouncing off the walls. And I could just talk to you like this all night. See? No echo. That's how loud my voice is. It just echoes and booms. Yeah. But I could do this. I could. I just need some more River Moon coffee. River Moon Coffee. I like my coffee, Doc. Just go to rivermooncoffee.com. River Moon Wellness. All the links are over at jimmychurchradio.com, the Amazon store. It is truly the best coffee in the world. All right. Now, um, <clears throat> I wanted to take some time to, to talk about a few things. And uh, one, <clears throat> I'm going to start off here. The Making Contact conference was over the weekend and, uh, well, five days. <clears throat> and I was over there with everybody and all of you fade or not. So it was great. Thank you uh, for hanging out. Um, it was virtual, artificial reality, right? Augmented reality, artificial reality. And everybody got to uh, create their avatars and, and go hang out. It was incredible. For me to stand on that stage and see all of these avatars there, it was, it was insane. And it was so much fun. But uh, I, um, I, I wrote out like this speech. I was on from 9 until 10.30, and I had Danny Sheehan there, and I had Stephen Bassett and uh, Mark Sims uh, to, to come in and chat with me. But... I wrote out and I and and it ended up getting more and more passionate what I had to say. And I don't get a, a chance too often. I mean a little bit, you know, for 10 minutes a night here on Fade to Black and I do do some little rant and things, but but I very rarely get to just just let it out. And I did. And the reason uh for that um I didn't have a reason. What I mean, what I mean is, I started to get emotional about our UFO community as I was writing this, and and I thought, man, this is just too much. It's 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 too much. But I'm going to say it anyway. There is so much going on right now. Our UFO community uh, before uh, before this year, really. Um, we can, everybody brings up December, 2017 and that's fine. That's great. But, um, this last six months has been crazy and leading up to that. And I'm going back to when I was 10 years old, you know, that's, that's 50 years where I was focused on maybe something happening once a year on TV, some UFO documentary is going to be out something live on television. And then it came to, you know, things like Larry King on, on CNN though. And, and, and all of that was just spaced out. It was like a year apart and sometimes two years. And, uh, you know, UFO documentaries that you had to go and chase down, you know, then YouTube, you know, of course came out 
there uh, there are a lot of uh, documentaries in the '70s and in the '80s that that are now on YouTube, but you never got a chance to see those, you know, and released, uh, you know, on videotape or something in the '80s, and 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 that stuff was hard to find. It was a rare thing. And now, even since 2017, when I think about what is happening right now and in this last six months, it's been a whirlwind for this UFO community. And I am so happy for this UFO community because I know how I feel and what is going on right now. Yes, um, Stephen Greer, right, came out with his documentary. Um, it came out with two in the last year. Um, James Fox and the phenomenon, uh, uh, the TV series, of course, you know, Showtime's JJ uh, Abrams and and Netflix with the with the six part UFO secret projects. Um, that six part documentary, those others, and tonight we have John Sumple and Jack Roth joining us. Their new documentary which is uh, getting ready to come out. And we're going to talk about all of that tonight. And, <laughs> oh, man. To do, to do, to do, to do. <laughs> Oh, man. I'm live right now in the middle of the show, and I am texting you, and everybody knows that you are interrupting. Period. I'll text you during the break, period. That's Lou Elizondo. (laughs) And speaking of that, so we have uh, the the conferences going on. We just did the conference with uh, Billy Carson. Absolutely an amazing conference. We've got the uh, John and Jack's new film that is getting uh, uh, getting ready to be released. And then there is another film that I can't say too much about right now, but it's shot and finished. And that's going to premiere, I'll just tell you right now, on 11-11, uh, November 11th. And um, everything, and this is, uh, this is the stuff that I can talk about. There's other things going on with other people and some stuff that I'm involved in too, but I know what's happening and it's getting ready to bust out. There's other stuff that is happening and it's getting ready to bust out and it's all happening at the same time. The conversations that I have during the day and I know uh, who I'm talking to, what is happening, what is going on, all these things all at the same time, and it is, I, I feel like I'm going to have a heart attack. I, I am just emotionally so happy, and my adrenaline, because I know what is going to happen for this community. And, and I spoke about this on Saturday night, and I didn't want to let that go. If you weren't at making contact, this is what I spoke about on uh, Saturday night. Everything is happening right now, and it's at breakneck speed. Um, I, I waited 50 years for, for this, and, and I can only tell you that um, uh, this community is, is fin- finally going to be where they've always wanted to be. There's the other part to this, which uh, uh, I spoke about on Saturday, which is this. I, I kind of miss our little private world, right? Our community, you know, the community's big, but I'm talking about, we had a private world where we talked, we did, you know, we wanted people to, to be exposed to this. We wanted worldwide acceptance. We wanted the Senate and the white house and and the military to, to finally be, we wanted, but now, we got all of that. And our little private world is now not so private. And I, I kind of miss it. Isn't it strange? 
I don't know if I want. I mean, we always wanted mainstream media to be covering this, right? We wanted the Senate, we wanted the Congress, we wanted the House, we wanted the White House, we wanted, you know, acceptance and recognition. Well, you know what? We've got all of that. And I kind of liked it better before. <laughs> it's the truth. I thought about this. Our little private world is is now everybody else's business. But as I said Saturday night, you got to be careful what you wish for. This is what we wanted. We wanted acceptance. We wanted everybody talking about this. We wanted the mainstream media, we wanted the newspapers, and we wanted every, we want, and, and now here we are. And it's only going to get crazier. These are good days. These are good days. These are great days. I am your host, Jimmy Church. We have an amazing week coming up. Tonight, John Semple and Jack Roth are here to introduce their new film. It is called extraordinary the revelations tomorrow night scott walter is back he's back with the stones and wednesday night anjali anjali is here for the first time it's an incredible story and i am going to this is her first interview okay i i know all the requests have come in we are going to get all of the details on Wednesday night with Anjali. And then Thursday night, of course, is Fader Night with open lines all night long. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black. What an amazing time to be in our UFO community. I'm right there. This is great stuff. On the Game Changer Network and KGRA, the planet. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Follow me on Twitter at J Church Radio. All right, all right. I'll be right back with John and Jack right after this short break. Stay with me. This is Nicole Church, daughter of you-know-who, and you're listening to Fade to Black on JimmyChurchRadio.com and the Game Changer Network. You're listening to Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. Fade to Black will now pause for alien identification. The station that talks the net. KGRA Radio. Introducing the Game Changer Blend from River Moon Coffee that delivers a customized blend made specifically for the fader knots. If the game is rigged, change the game. It's a bolder cup with some bite. Game Changer is the coffee of choice for those that prefer an organic dark roast that is slightly lighter and milder, but it's still dark. With wild notes of pecans and chocolate with a rich, balanced, full-bodied cup that is roasted to perfection for a great coffee to start your day as an after-dinner coffee or anywhere in between. Artisan, small batch, roasted to perfection. USDA certified organic, all River Moon coffee is freshly roasted and packaged in the USA. Just go to rivermooncoffee.com or click on the banners over on our site and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15 percent off of your order today rivermooncoffee.com this is the only way forward this is made to black make contact kgra radio.com this is Jimmy Church of fade to black and you can get our podcast for just two dollars per month all you have to do is click on the podcast banner over at Jimmy Church radio.com hi folks it's troubling times, and fear is pushing emotions, which in turn pushes health the wrong direction. Do you ever get an ache because life is uneasy? Try Life Change Tea at GetTheTea.com. Life Change Tea works on your digestive tract, helping to move food through quicker and comfortably so your health is spot on. Life Change Tea may not help with world issues, but it will help with your digestive issues. A glass a day helps keep the intruders away. So, change your life today. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com.
Dot com. If your health game is off, get on by ordering Life Change Tea. Get the tea dot com. And while you're on our site, look around at the great non-GMO organic supplements. And if you're a sales shopper, go to our specials page and see what's for you. I've been drinking the tea for 12 years and I'm sure glad for its health benefits. Again, that's get the tea dot com. Get the tea dot com. The tea that makes you go. Fade or not, when you think about the future of our country and where we're headed, do you wonder about the food supply? I do. Disruptions in the food supply chain could be disastrous, and they usually occur with little warning. That's why the smartest thing you can do today is to stockpile emergency food, water, and other essentials. I personally recommend My Patriot Supply. They're the nation's largest emergency preparedness company, serving millions of customers for more than a decade. In fact, they're the only source my family trusts for our preparedness plan. You should too. Right now, save 20% off a full four-week supply of delicious meals that provide 2,000 calories a day. Saving 20% helps too, doesn't it? Especially now. So go to preparewithjimmy.com and get ready. That's preparewithjimmy.com. There's no time to lose. Do it now. Nine out of ten geneticists agree. Fade to Black is not your father's radio show. On the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the planet. Hi, this is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This is Kyle Matthew. You're listening to Jimmy Church Radio. All right. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Great night on the show. I'm so excited. Tonight, John Semple and Jack Roth join us. They are going to introduce their new film, Extraordinary, The Revelations, with an exclusive world premiere of their trailer that we did about an hour ago over on YouTube, and you can go and check that out. Only on Fade to Black, well, tonight, tomorrow, everybody else is going to be showing this trailer. Jack Roth and John Semple have been working in the paranormal realm together since 1997. In 2011, along with the third J, Jamie Saranoff, uh, they founded J3 Films to create engaging, entertaining, and educational documentaries that challenge conventional wisdom. Now, J3 Films takes audiences on an emotional journey of discovery by tapping into the innate human desire to explore the unknown and asking the question, what if this is all real. Kind of sounds like Fade to Black, actually. Extraordinary, the revelations explores the global history of ETs, the end games proposed by three vastly different belief systems. Now, we are going to be going through all three tonight and the experiences of retired military whistleblowers directly involved in government programs related to ET engagement and communication. I would like to welcome back to Fade to Black, Jack Roth and John Sumple. Going to be going oh, through. Oh, wait a minute. Sorry about that, guys. You guys have been listening to a delay of the show. And uh, <laughs> how entertaining was that, hearing everything in time delay? Welcome to the cool. show. Yeah, a little. You know, you know what's funny? Uh, and welcome, uh, John and Jack. It's uh, great to uh, see you and, and hear you both again. But um, uh, that was uh, a 90-second uh, 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 time travel. Uh, thing for you both uh, to enjoy, but I have to fight that all the time. So um, I, I don't know where to start. Um, uh, my my part in this. How do I how do I say this? I'm going to let you guys uh, uh, describe how I got involved in this film uh, because I don't appear in it. Now we'll talk about that in just a second. <laughs> Um, but, uh, uh, I, I've been following you guys for a long time and I remember, um, this is kind of where I want to start. I remember, uh, the two of you popped up in my face with a camera 
a couple of years ago and <laughs> said, talk, right? <laughs> and, um, and it was, I was like, okay, oh, oh, like right now? And, and we did that, and I knew somehow, of course, we got to mention Lori Wagner as well, that eventually we would find a way to work with each other. And I'm more excited about my participation in, in my small way, my contribution to the film, uh, more than being on camera. And, and I want to thank you for that opportunity. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with John first, Jack, if you don't mind. Uh, John and I did a lot of sweat uh, equity in this film, and we got through it. Um, uh, John, thank you. And the approach of this film was completely different uh, than before. Uh, why did you choose to do this after the first two films? Well, <clears throat> this one, I think we we see it more as a... Um, I'm getting an echo the echo is that's... not from us. You sound great over here. Okay. Uh, you're going to have to fight through it. Okay. I'll do my best. <laughs> okay. It stopped. It's gone now. Um, the, uh, I guess the, 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 we'll get into the whole narration part of it. Uh, the first thing I would say though, is that isn't ambush journalism the best way to make friends? <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? And and when when ambush journalism, guerrilla f filmmaking, right? When, right? when when that goes down, you get the real person. You got the real me. <laughs> I get, I no, get. and it was and it was great. It was a great way to kind of introduce ourselves, and and uh, we we had a mutual connection with Jim Martin at Ten Ninety One Pictures, and and that that definitely helped to kind of grease the skids. But it really was we were looking for a voice that best helped tell the next story, which in our opinion is one of the more important ones, which is how does this all fit together? So we kind of feel like we've been taking, uh, even though this is like the, what we're considering the third leg of a trilogy, uh, they're, they're three standalone films, but they all kind of build on each other, kind of culminating in where we are today. The first film was more focused on lights in the sky, abduction, reproduction, hybridization programs in, in hybrid children and kind of left you dangling with the hybrid children. The second film was more about the emotional impact of being an experiencer who's gone through something extremely traumatic, like an unexplained, uh, unexplained pregnancy, and an appeal to be more uh, empathetic and sympathetic to people who've gone through something that you can't quite understand. This film is like, well, how does this all fit in in the grand scheme of things? So when we look at the, the history of the world, uh, it going from the earliest recordings of uh, what could very easily be defined as beings from another world that residents of the planet saw and documented on cave walls and in and in, in, uh, during the Renaissance period in, in uh, paintings and in ancient Greece Greece and Egypt and in Italy the things that they all kind of documented and we wanted to take audiences in this film on a journey from that point through to the present day is to where does it all fit together and who's playing a role in manipulating or dictating what the story is, but also explore the belief paradigms that have evolved during the course of this, this history of, of UFOs and uh, abductions on the planet. So when we were thinking about an authority that could best deliver some of the messages in the film, we, 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 we said we got to get the guy with the golden pipes <laughs> oh, who could <can> okay. deliver, <laughs> could, could deliver. Uh, but, you know, it was, it was in all seriousness, we wanted somebody who, who had a passion for the, the, the subject matter, but also could give a discerning delivery of some of the messages that are in the film. And, and, and you were really kind of our, our number one with a bullet. Well, and, and the opportunity to uh, narrate, uh, you know, a major release like this, uh, for me, I mean, it's an honor and a privilege, and I, and I take it very seriously, but it was so much fun uh, for, for me to do. And I'll let the audience know, John and I, uh, we, we, we did two versions of the narration. We did the Jimmy version, uh, which, which <laughs> sucked. And then we, we went back <laughs> and, uh, um, uh, it, it, you know, so funny, you know, the Jimmy version, UFOs are back and they're pissed off. 
<laughs> right. So, um, so, John, so John and I, um, which was so much fun. He's the director of the film. So we were uh, able to go back and do the narration with direction. And I've always wanted to do that, to just have a, a director guide me through it and say, that's good. That's great. Let's change up a little bit. You, you, you know, I wanted to go through that process and, and we did, and it was so much fun. And I remember, um, John, John is in another continent, right? And so we did this, uh, via, uh, teleconferencing, but, um, at the end of this, you were worn out, John. I was looking at yeah, you. Yeah, was. I was. I think it was like four in the morning. It was, <laughs> as it is for me right now. It's four forty right now for me in the morning. So, I had my cup of coffee ready to go. Jack, you should. But one of the things I'll say, one of the things I'll do, I'll quickly say about that process is that you were great because you brought a lot of alternatives to the read, and uh, some of the things I wanted you to say a certain way, and some of the things that you said. What if we do it this way? I liked those options better. So yeah, it was very collaborative. And, and I think the end result was, was exactly what we were looking for. And we didn't fight once. I was hoping for the no. director talent fight, <laughs> you know, at least once. It didn't happen. No, nah, Jack, it didn't, didn't happen, man. And I, I wish you could oh. have seen John at the end of this session, man. He was like, Jimmy, it's great, man. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go face plant in my bed now I'm out, but, uh, it <laughs> yeah. was, it was a long process, uh, Jack. And again, Jack, thank you for the opportunity. Um, uh, and I, I actually want to move on, uh, from the, nar I'm just the narrator. <laughs> um, Oh, um, um, I, can I say, can I share one thing with the audience though, uh, with you two, I didn't sure. know, uh, Hollywood has, certain standards for the titling at the beginning of a film, right? Okay. And I know that directors are always last, right? And if they don't have the director's name, then at the end of the film, he'll be the first, you know, I knew these things, but when I get the, the, the movie and I'm watching it and the first credit up on the screen is me, I almost lost it. I, I, I did. I, and, and I checked on that and I found out that narrators are, are titled first. I didn't know that. Yeah, kind of a big yeah. deal. It's a man. I'm, I'm serious. I'm serious. I had a, I, I freeze framed it. I did. You, I paused the post film. it on your wall. I did. I did. I did. I did a screen grab. <laughs> okay. Oh. oh man. I got something in my throat. Hold on. You guys talk to each other. Okay. So Jack, um, what did you think about well, the film? Oh God! No, I'm just well, is that honestly, the best? You know, you know, one, uh, hold on, Jack. It, 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 Jack, it, it, it goes right there. Was the appreciation of a good show host? Okay, <laughs> Jack. So, Jack, what did you think of the film? I want to, uh, but uh, uh, it's all serious. Your, your your contribution, Jack, to this community is an important one. And you are here not for the fun of it. You're not you're certainly not here for the money. This is a, a, a passion. You are here for what brings you into the UFO community? Well, I think this whole thing for us has been a journey, one big journey. And when we started, we, I always I was always interested in UFOs. And that enigma, right? That question of what are these things? Because obviously they are there. They're in the sky. I, not everyone's seeing swamp gas. Not everyone is seeing a flock of seagulls. Come on, right? So objective people are like, uh, something's happening here. So I always had an interest. But John and I, of course, have a history. Uh, and and uh, we go back a ways. And uh, we always wanted to do documentaries. And just kind of landed in our lap. I mean, we met some people again who knew the first documentary, as you know, we did on Stan Romanik. And that was the beginning of the journey. And as we take the audience through the journey, what people really don't understand is that we have been through a journey of, of our own, which has been extremely profound. Uh, and it started with the first film 
and it, it, you know we use extraordinary as a brand for these three this trilogy um and it's almost become much more than that because it's really been this huge we've been connecting we've been trying to connect the dots in a way that layman could watch it and not have not been interested in it at all and see the first one and then say wait a minute this is really interesting interesting and then boom the second one takes them a little deeper and then the third one kind of ties together all these pieces you know and says hey why the the ultimate question of why if this is happening why is it happening and i will go back to the narration for one second the narration for the third film was by far the most important narration that we had um we had none in the first the second was we had narration, but for the third film, we knew how important it was because we had to tie everything together. And the way we had to tell that story, um, it required a really strong narration. So again, I know we, you didn't want to talk about it anymore, but I do have to say that Jamie, that was really on top of our, the top of our mind was that the narration was critical. And we spent a lot of time writing that, uh, that narrative of where are we taking the audience with this? So we're hoping that the three films, kind of takes people on the same type of journey we've been on because we're not experts. We're filmmakers and we're curious people like, you know, we're like the average Joe out there in the world. Who's like, what's going, what, what might be going on here? Right. What if this is true? Right. That's why the tagline, what if this is true? I don't know. I'm not a government official, right? I'm not a researcher who's written 20 books. So what does that mean for us having these experiences and going through this and meeting the people, meeting the people we've met, in these last three films has changed all of us forever. And it's, and, and that's, it's been an incredible journey, Jimmy. It really has. Now, how, uh, uh, this is for you, Jack, but, uh, I want John to answer this uh, question too, but, um, but you guys have been a part of this message and supporting the UFO community, uh, for quite a while now. And your efforts are starting to not only be rewarded, but get recognized. And suddenly the world is talking about the subject now. And the timing couldn't be better, not only for J3 films, but now this film is getting ready to get released. Oh, by the way, we'll talk about the film festival too. We'll do that after the break. That is, uh, that is extraordinary. So we'll talk about that, but <laughs> But how exciting is it to be a part of this now with with the recognition that is going on around the world and you're you're part of this? Yeah, it has been amazing. I think that I, I feel like when we first got involved in this, the way things went down, the way things kind of came together, it almost felt like we were meant to do this. And we were on purpose. This was something that we were supposed to do in our own way because of the way we thought and the experiences that we had and the way we wanted to present this, that it would be something that would be valuable for people. The timing, right, correct. I mean, the, the things that have happened in the last couple of years, we couldn't anticipate that. But we always felt that it was something that was right around the corner, that this was something that needed to be talked about because it was going to affect all of us very soon in a very major way. And now you can see that happening, uh, whether it's a paradigm shift in the way people think, mm -hmm. whether it's the way the government is now saying, oh, well, by the way, yeah, they are real. <laughs> you know, whatever that disclosure may or may not look like, we don't know, you know, but we feel like that we're, we're honored to have played a part in that as filmmakers, as documentary filmmakers to kind of educate people and get them, get them interested in it, get them into this. So it's like, okay, get ready because this is something that really is, there's nothing more important. The only thing that could be more important than possible extraterrestrial life visiting earth is life and death itself. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you know I what? Mean, seriously. And ET e e might still be above that. Right. Right. To, to right. Be, now, I, I mentioned, uh, you know, the three J's and J3 films, but uh, there's an L involved, too. And, and Lori Wagner. And how amazing is she to work with? Uh, she's great. The, the best. John, you can. Yeah. She's the no, sweetest. Lori, Lori I'll, I'll, I'll just say this role. and then I'll let John take it. But one of the sweetest people I've ever met, one of the most committed people to this field that I've ever met. And she's so enthusiastic about everything she does about and she wants to do it right. And that you can't 
that you can't put a price on that. I mean, Lori's amazing. She's become a dear friend to all of us. And I'll leave it at that. John, go, because yep. I know you have a lot to say about yep. her. No, I, I the, the the huge value as a human being because she is a caring individual and she's probably tearing up now listening to this. <laughs> but uh, the, the the tremendous connection that we had from her to, with her from the first time we met, which was on a phone call, uh, and there was there were circumstances with that phone call that brought us all together immediately. And uh, ever since that day back in I think it was 2011, uh, it, the the connection just manifested very quickly into a friendship and that friendship was even i think more critically important to our success because of her connection to so many people in the field and Lori just made it very easy for us to be introduced to anybody and everybody in the ufology world and we we are indebted to her because of those connections and like jack said her passion for uh, making sure that these kind of stories are told in a way that are meaningful and will resonate with people. And that's one of the things I think that we have always been uh, focused on is telling good stories is most important to us versus telling stories that somebody wants to hear in a given uh, you know, segment of of an audience. And we've had conversations about that. Jack and I were talking about that just before the show too, is that everybody has their own belief paradigm and so many people want to hear you know, the thing that validates what they believe, but there's so many different roads to go down with this. How do you serve the best one? And, uh, you know, I think where Lori has helped us is the exposure to so many different people who have provided us with a lot of incredible insight that has helped us be better aware of what is going on and as a result, better storyteller. So yeah, to underscore this, uh, Lori is very critical to, to our success. Now there's a, there's another part of this that neither of you mentioned, uh, when it comes to Lori. Um, yeah, she's great. She's fun. She's funny. She's awesome. She's all of that. She is a crazy researcher. She oh, yes. knows this subject inside and out. And, and, and both of you do too. And, and when we went through, uh, the setup for the film, uh, which we'll uh, get to after the break, um, your the, both of you, your knowledge into this is, is just insane. Right. And I feel like, um, I don't have to, t I, I'm not here t telling anybody uh, about the past or the re I don't have to do that. The, the other part of this is Lori she she's calling me and or I'm calling her and we're sharing information. She is on top of the 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 now now, she, right? She is researching and and that's what's critical about this. This film is not made for to get your yayas out. This film is made <laughs> uh, because of compassion and knowledge of the subject, and and that really needs to be said for not only the three J's but the L. Right. Three J's and an L. Yeah. <laughs> Three J's. Yeah. And uh, I think that one of the things that, you know, with Lori too, is that, you know, you have this, the, the approach is always, I, she's almost like the TMZ of this. Like she, she, she has like up to the minute, like up to oh, the by minute. the way. Yes. That's my <laughs> point in the now, now. I mean, right. I'm telling you, she's laughing. I don't know how, I know she's laughing right now, but she is committed. And that is what is so incredible. Now, uh, we're going to take a break in a couple of seconds. We got uh, some breaking news. We'll talk about this um, after the break, but uh, it was finally announced and confirmed, and we'll get to the details. But uh, I'll hand this. Uh, who got the news first from the from uh, the Pasadena Film Festival? Was it? Uh, I did. Okay, yeah. John. So then, uh, you got the news today. The film is uh, extraordinary. The revelations is going to be at the Pasadena Film Festival. When you when you got the news, I, I, I mean, <laughs> seriously, what'd you do? Well, there was a little bit of a gulp because we're still in post. And the screening is in like three weeks, so <laughs> we're, we're we're wrapping everything up. So it gives us uh, the the afterburners. Uh, we were accepted with a work in progress review of the film, so they loved it enough. You know, it, it, it went un, unfinished, so it, it's got to be 
got to be good by the time we're done. So we're we're scrambling to get that all wrapped up this week. So this is uh, that that's my focus really is is making sure that we get it done right. But excited that we have an opportunity to have not only it, it at Pasadena, but this is going to be the world premiere of the film. So we're really stoked at that. And and anybody that's interested in in joining us for the premiere, I'm coming in from South Africa. Joe's uh, uh, Jack is coming in from. Orlando, I believe Jamie is coming in from New Jersey, and Lori definitely is coming up from San Diego. So we'll be there. We'll have other people there uh, join us as well. Jimmy, I believe you'll be there. I, hoping. You Fingers know, crossed. It's down the street. So, yeah, I think I can make it. <laughs> I think I can make it. And we'd have to you – know, all, all the listeners that are in, in Southern California or the Southwest that are up for a journey, you know, come to Pasadena. Uh, it's the week of uh, the 9th. I think through the 16th is the festival, and I just found out today that our screening is definitely going to be on Saturday the 11th, and we we have a prime evening spot too, so it's in smack dab in the middle of the weekend. Everybody can go out and have a good time. We may even do a little bit of a pre-funk before, so we have a chance to meet and hang out with uh, people that want to attend. Yeah, it's going to be great. And Jack, what what did you do, man, when, when you got the news today? I was thrilled because, I you know, Pasadena – we love Pasadena and they, they do a great job with their festival and it's, it's an honor to be accepted again, because you can't take that for granted. You know, every time is another, it's a different film and they, they want quality. And the fact that they said, yes, you know, they accepted us means a lot to us. So we're honored. We're thrilled. And I love going, I always love coming to Southern California and Pasadena is beautiful incredible place so we're really excited and you know what we're really excited to see a lot of people we haven't been able to see in a really long time including yourself jimmy yeah <laughs> so we're really excited it's been it's been almost two years since uh we have seen each other it was yes. it was february 2020 wasn't it right am i right i think so i th- it was contact. Uh, i want to say yes contact john right oh that yeah. okay Whenever that so was yeah that was two years two, ago two two two, yeah. two and a half years ago yeah wow wow well there was disclosure fest too right i don't uh, there might have been a few people there uh, i wasn't there i don't think jack was there Lori, i think was there oh for sure. Lori, right. Lori shot me with a the camera there too as well who was running the camera yeah. that day that was probably Patrick. Oh, Patrick. Okay. You know what? It's it's so long ago now. It's it's it's, it's just crazy to me. <laughs> All right, let's take our break. Our guest tonight, we have John Sumple and Jack Roth. We are announcing their new film. It is called Extraordinary: The Revelations. More with John and Jack. It's almost the name of a band. They'll be appearing at the Holiday Inn, John and Jack, (laughs) and their greatest hits. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. We'll be right back after this short break. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network. At KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. This is KGRA Digital Broadcasting Station, Salt Lake City, Utah, Van Buren, Arkansas. This is Billy Carson with ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. Forbidden Knowledge TV has just reached its one year anniversary. That's right, one year. And as a show of appreciation, we are giving all new subscribers a free 30 day trial of ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. That's 30 days to binge watch thousands of movies, documentaries, conferences, workshops, lectures, yoga classes, meditation courses, and so much more. So log on to ForbiddenKnowledge.tv from your computer or mobile device or get the Forbidden Knowledge TV app on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon, iTunes, or Google Play today and use coupon code 30 days free. That's coupon code 30 days free on ForbiddenKnowledge.tv today. Because you never got that pony you always wanted. (laughs) Damn it. Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network. KGRADB.com. 
Listen, I know and you know that you've always wanted your first crystal skull. Or maybe you're a collector just like me, but you just don't know where to go to find the real thing. Then I met Carolyn Ford over at EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com. Carolyn is the guardian of Einstein, one of the most respected ancient crystal skulls in the world. All of her unique skulls have been imprinted sitting with Einstein in his sacred lodge and are carved from the finest gemstone and materials. Imprinting is the process of receiving the ancient wisdom from the master skull or master computer. Einstein, the ancient crystal skull. To see Carolyn's current collection of crystal skulls, just visit her store at EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com or click on the banner over on our site. Don't forget to use the promo code JIMMY at checkout to receive 10% off of your order today. That's promo code JIMMY. Finding your first or next crystal skull is easy. Just visit EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of fade to black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the fade to black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of fade to black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied, dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Hello, I'm and you're listening to my main man, Jimmy Church, on jimmychurchradio.com. Hi, this is Ray Sobs here, repping the planet, and you're listening to my good friend, Jimmy Church, Fade to Black, on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA Digital Broadcast Station. This is Toby Kebble. You're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Don't hurt me, Jimmy. I'm only little. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And this is Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. We're the Honey Brothers. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And I'm Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. And you're listening to Jimmy Church. The Revolution. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and you can become an official fader not by just going to our membership section at jimmychurchradio.com. Hello, this is Serena Wright Taylor from Conscious Life Expo, and you're listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church, who holds the Lucky Pony record for the best astrological chart since 1963. True story. This is Micah Hanks of the Graylian Report, and you're listening to Jimmy Church on Fade to Black, across the globe on the Game Changer Radio Network and the one and only KGRA Radio, The Planet. <laughs> Welcome back, Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, Jack Roth, John Sumple, director, executive producer of their new film. It is called Extraordinary, The Revelations. Now, right before the break, we were talking about the uh, Pasadena Film Festival, and the film is going to do its world premiere Saturday, September 11th. Um, and we're going to make these announcements, uh, the when and where, um, as, as, uh, they get firmed up and settled, but we'll make those announcements on social media. And I'm assuming the Pasadena film festival website will have all the scheduling information. Absolutely. (laughs) John is a man of many words. What about I was ty- <laughs> typing in the in the chat? So oh, was, oh you're hanging out in the chat. I haven't I haven't been yeah. over there. Are they behaving? Uh, you know, it's a chat. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, red carpet. I have to ask. Red carpet. Yeah, sure, absolutely. And uh, what's the attire? 
Oh, whatever's comfortable. I have. Uh, it's not. It's not that big. I have one of Pee Wee Herman's uh, suits. I might. I might. I might wear that. Um, but this <laughs> this has got to be pretty exciting, and uh, uh, the the fader knots are going to be there, and and just announcing this, and and uh, for them, I everything that I do, just like you two, um, and J three Films is is for the community, and and I just can't wait for this. Now that's the world premiere. Um, what about uh, the rest of the world and and a release date? Uh, do we have that yet? Yeah, but before I get to that little suspense, for the Pasadena Film Festival, uh, one of the things that I would recommend people look into, so there's there's two options here. You can wait and get tickets when they go on sale for the individual uh, ticket sales for individual movies, or you can get a festival pass. The And this is something that we went through when we were in the festival a couple years back, that... Uh, there's no guarantee for anybody that buys a ticket the day of. The only way that you can guarantee that you're getting in is if you attend or if you if you purchase a, a festival pass. And the, and the cost is it's a higher, obviously, yes, but I think it's like thirty five ish dollars for a festival pass and a single film is I think in the twelve to fifteen dollar range. Don't quote me on that, but it's in that. It's kind of like that. But the last thing we would want to do is have people traveling from uh, long distances and then uh, not. Uh, be able to get in if they didn't buy a pass. So the, the, they could expand it to a larger theater if enough people want to come. So if 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 the fader knots are ready to come in droves, um, you know, come on down and make sure you get your tickets ahead of time and just go to the festival uh, website to to either purchase. I think the individual show passes will be available end of this week, uh, maybe next week. But uh, you can buy uh, festival passes now. So that's that's just a little housekeeping. I wanted to make sure I got out of the way. But as far as the uh, the premiere of the film. The official launch date, drum roll, is November 30th, Tuesday, November 30th. Tuesday. It will be available on streaming platforms uh, as a pay-per-view event initially, and then it will roll out uh, whatever the, the distributor, 1091, takes care of all those details. But uh, we've been told our launch date is a go for November 30th. How exciting is this now? Um, at, uh, I've been to a few film festivals and after the film, uh, shows, usually they bring the director up for a Q and a, right. Are you going to do that? We'll all be up there. You'll be up there too. Oh, no way. Jack, <laughs> Jack, you're going to yeah, be up there taking questions. Yeah, that's awesome, isn't it? Yeah, we love that. We love doing that because it's really, that's so much fun. And and we get great questions always from the audience. And we love talking about this. And we can talk about this all day and night. So for us, it's just really exciting. <laughs> Ye bleepin' ha, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, man, that is just awesome. Okay. All right. Yeah, so uh, you might get a couple questions coming your way. Yeah, all right, all right. I'm down for that. I'm, I'm ready, man. I am so ready for this. All right, let's 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 talk about the film now. Um, uh, we can uh, get to the cast in, in a little bit, and that, that blew my mind. Also, all right, let me jump ahead for a second. Clifford Stone appears in this film. Mm -hmm. And I I don't know, maybe you guys know, is this the last film that he he was in before he he passed? I think he had been in a couple of other things as well. We interviewed him. It's been a while back. It's been over around 2 years ago. Uh so it that interview was done then and uh he I think I've seen a couple of things that he was in after that, but such a that was one of the highlights for us as a as a crew yeah. sitting with him. That was a it was like a holy grail moment. Yeah, I know Jack <laughs> feels the same way. That. John, we think alike. I can't believe that. I was just thinking that was like that's the holy grail of this uh, it, it, being able to sit with Clifford for what ten hours. I mean, we really spent a lot of time with him. Right. Um, yeah and hear his story and see the emotion on his face up close. That to me was the ultimate in, 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 in that's where the rubber meets the road because those are the stories that I think are 
matter most because from the standpoint of here you have ex-military guys Mm -hmm. who love their country, right, fought for their country, did what they had to for their country, coming out and then saying, I was involved in this program that involved ETs. And to sit there and listen to them, um, the emotions come out of them because it's really hard on many levels. There's a lot of emotions. There's a little bit of anger, but there's a little bit of fear. And when you see this up close, when you're sitting there with him, I was, I, I felt so honored to be able to, and I'm glad we sat with him, John, because, you know, these guys don't live forever. Right? No, they you know? don't. It, it was it, for me, uh, to do, uh, to watch the film and uh, of course cut the narration and and go through those parts, um, uh, I I I, admi- I had I have admired him for so long. I'm getting choked up just thinking about this. Yeah, but uh, yeah, me just too. a big amount of respect. And then I watching the film, it was it was tough, man. Working on the film, and, and certainly you guys going through the editing process and looking at the footage, it, it's it's just got to be tough on you, John. Were you? Yeah, there, there was, I mean, the, 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 being in the present, it really was, I felt like that. We were setting up for the interview and when and we had Clifford to come about an hour after we were setting up. And when he entered, it was, it was like you're in the presence of royalty. And, and he's a very humble man. He doesn't feel that way at all. But the people who understand his role respect the hell out of him. And we respected him tremendously and, and were honored that he would give us, give us the time that he did. And we spent several hours with him. But it wasn't just about the interview with him. It was the conversations in between some of the takes. It was right. the conversations before and, and mostly the conversations afterward. It was emotional. I think there, uh, there were several of us, uh, I, I know Jack was, that had tears in our eyes when, when we were interviewing him, when we were talking with him off the camera, and when we said goodbye. It was uh, it was a very powerful opportunity to hear somebody who 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 really passionately believes his experiences and wants the world to embrace them with a curiosity. I know that's that's the awesome part, I think, about about Clifford that 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 we all really enjoyed the process. But going through afterwards and looking at all the footage and then once we heard of his passing, it was. I would I I definitely was upset because he didn't get a chance to see the finished product. So that that was bothersome. So Clifford, if you're if you're listening, we served it and we did our part to, to serve your story in the best possible light. There's um uh three sections to the film and uh three approaches, three mindsets. Um, uh, certainly, you know, filmmaking is always act one, act two, act three. Well, you guys took that head on in, in this case, um, who's, uh, was it collaborative to approach it this way? Whose idea was it to go with these three different mindsets? Yeah, Jack, I think it was, that was one of those things that, <clears throat> excuse me, through the course of, of, of going through what's next, and the different conversations that we've had with different people, uh, it kind of opened up. I, I couldn't say that there was one moment, but I know that it was a, a, a collaborative yeah. process on our end to, to, to what's the best next story to tell. And the first, let, let's go with um, Act One, uh, uh, Jack. Um, let's, let's talk about that. What is Act One? And, and again, what was the approach? Well, we start with history. Uh, and that's kind of our lead into the film. And we, we kind of do a, uh, as you well know, Jimmy, because that was part of the narrative. But, uh, you know, we talk about we go way back from the very beginning and we start tying things together from a historic perspective on all of these experiences and sightings that people have had. Um, and then it's really with the three paradigms. So like the first paradigm you would call act one uh, is um we talk about there was well we we realize and John's right what happened was in all the conversations we have behind the scenes and all the people we interview we're realizing that you know there's really three schools of thought here and John's like well there's definitely a a a biblical narrative right that comes from this and it's very the people that believe that are very passionate about it there's also what you would call an ascension narrative right 
and 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 then there's also a uh, <laughs> it's it's really David Jacobs who does this in the film, who talks about this in the film. But it's colonization. It's the negative, darker side of it. So, and John, what is it? The uh, what's first? Uh, the uh, the sequencing in the film is we start with uh, colonization and then ascension and then biblical. Right. So act one. So David Jacobs, Dr. David Jacobs, who is amazing, uh, has done so much research, so many years of research. Uh, it's colonization. And that's a little darker take on it. And, and from that, that take is basically that the ETs are up to no good. And uh, these abductions and the hybridization experiments are all very nefarious and it's all leading to colonization almost like a takeover that these hybrids are going to take over for human beings and it's really scary even for us to think that for anybody to think that is a very scary way to look at this but there is evidence to suggest you know abductions are not pleasant experiences for people uh the, these unexplained pregnancies are not pleasant experiences. They're being taken against their will. These things are happening against our will. So there is a negative element to this that we met, we wanted to make sure that we presented that. Even though a lot of people aren't going to want to hear that, they're not going to want to see it, it's, it's what's happening. It's part of what's happening. So that would be the first paradigm, the first school of thought. And uh, I want to stay on this for a second. Uh, I wanted to get to the cast, and we can do that after the break. You guys uh, cover this pretty extensively in the seating. And uh, as uncomfortable as some people may be uh, in hearing this information, um, it is something that has been put together through uh, extensive research, not only by David Jacobs, but there are quite a few researchers that have been looking into this. But there's another part to this. Because you said nefarious and you said dark, and it is. But I think that if you talk to any of the um, abductees or somebody that has gone through a, a hybrid program, and if you ask them if they wouldn't have wanted this to happen to them, I think that they would say no, that the experience is more valuable than the negative aspect from it, and, and they wouldn't want that taken away from them. I'm not saying that they would want to do it again, right? <laughs> you know, right. Go, go. Right. but but the experience is I, I keep saying the word extraordinary, and mm -hmm. and they don't want that taken away from them. Uh, what's your response to that, Jack? Uh, my response would be I think they come to terms with it. I think that it's a horrible experience at the beginning, obviously, and I think that. For certain people, certainly a good, a good number of people who have had these experiences, they come to terms with a couple of things. First of all, there's a love for a child that a mother or a father will always have. So if you have one of these unexplained pregnancies and you're part of a hybridization program, you're always going to love that child. That child is yours. So if they are having these hybrid children, that's a, that part of it is always going to be a beautiful thing, that love for a child. And I think that people, people really struggle up front with this. And I think a, a number of them are able to get to a good place with it. And I think that's important for people to understand because, yeah, and that's a, I'm glad you brought that up because it is. It's negative up front. But what we're trying to determine, is it negative all the way through? Is it really that end game that David Jacobs talks about? Dr. Jacobs is very adamant about it. I say, hey, we're, we're in trouble. <laughs> Nothing good is going to come from this. A lot of people, again, don't like to hear that. A lot of people personally have gone through it and and kind of in their in order to deal with these extraordinary experiences have put it in a more positive light. Yeah, and and not everybody gets to go through that experience. That is something that is in a strange way is is precious, right? You went through that. Not everybody else gets to do that. It's kind of. You know, you compare it to some negative experience like, uh, you know, going to prison. Okay, well, that sucked, right? But not everybody gets to go through that experience, right? <laughs> and, and, and to share that. Now, I'm not saying it's, it's fun and the abduction phenomenon is fun, but this is something that uh, not everybody gets to do. And you don't want that experience taken away from you. In the end, 
okay, all right, you get to look back. You're still here, right? You get you get to share the experience. Um, uh, so you you have that. Yeah, do you understand right. what I'm saying, John? I do. I think it's there's a double edged sword to that, though. There's the experience to say that you have seen something that others haven't. And in, in, in the different people that we've talked to that have had these experiences, uh, they're challenged by it. Robert Fullington comes to mind uh, from the last film uh, during our ongoing conversations and still when, and in, engaging with him on social media and, and seeing the things that he says. is it, He has this constant kind of storyline of if only you could see what I'm seeing, what I've seen, what I know. And it's frustrating to some people who've had these experiences and these insights to uh, to connect with people who don't relate to what they have experienced. Right. So there's that part of it. The other part of it is that it's isolating. It can be very isolating when you're alone or you're or you're talking with somebody who doesn't get it or doesn't empathize or sympathize or connect with your experience being unique to you. That's the biggest challenge I think they have is the isolation that comes with it and the ridicule that could potentially follow. Once they find their tribe, they're good. And that really was one of the messages of the last film was let's help these people find their tribe, connect, find ways to talk. Make sure if you've had an experience and you don't know who to talk to, to reach out to somebody to find others who can truly understand what you've gone through and, and, and help you better understand and put it in a place where it can be something like Jack was saying that you can embrace and you've come to the, you know, through the experience to understand why you, why me, you know, that type of thing. Yeah. It's very, it's, it's a very, uh, I think it's a, a double edged, uh, sword in the sense that the experience is profound, but yet how you manage it is sometimes disturbing and troublesome. Now I don't want to give away, uh, too much of the film, um, and I want to jump into act two, but, uh, the biblical and religious aspect of this, I'm personally being challenged more and more, um, of what may really be going on here. And my views haven't changed, but it's getting more interesting. Um, and so as you approached John, the, the biblical side, right. Of this, how did, how did you, it, it's about as sensitive of an issue as, as we can have when it comes to ET and UFOs. It's a whole move. It can be its own movie. It could be its own series. It could be a, an ongoing channel of content because it's, it's, it's something when, when people think biblical, they think religion. But the biblical narr narrative is far from religion. The, you know, a lot of the people who are, would consider themselves to be biblical scholars in, in ufology are not religious, or they don't look at it from a religious perspective. They look at it from a biblical narrative perspective. And in talking with both L.A. Marzulli and Timothy Alberino, who are in the film, they both say the Bible is right is 100% of the time, the, the Bible is right 100% of the time. So it's always right. It, it, the narrative has been playing out the way it's supposed to from the very beginning of time. That's not to say that it's been, the messages have been manipulated by people who want to control the masses. They, they will readily admit to that, but you know they don't look at it from the religious point of view. They look at it from the narrative point of view, and it's, and it's more of a historical analysis than it is something that is spiritual, or spiritual and religion can get conflated, but I'd say they don't look at it as more as something is religious. So when you study it from that point of view, and there's things historically that you can point to to say that this is, you know, the, the, the Nephilim, this is who they are. This is who they were. This is what they did. And the fact that they look at, you know, what's happening today is very similar. And it's it's coming full circle in their in their mind that, uh, you know, modern day uh, alien presence in is the whole idea is to, to place the seed of the serpent in control and and. I don't want to give away too, too much of it. And, and I, not that I'm giving away anything because if you do your research, it's all out there, mm -hmm. but the way that it's presented in the film, will, I, I think gives people reason to think, Hmm, what, what, what do I do with this? This is a perspective that I've never thought about before. And the one thing that we found very interesting about the three different paradigms that we focused on in the film was that they all believe in lights in the sky, sentient beings controlling those they all believe in abductions. They all believe in 
uh, uh, hybridization pro programs, and they all believe in hybrids. You know, you, they don't believe you, in the same end game. He, you're, you, you sound like you're quoting from the Bible right now. That's the trippy part, right? If, yeah. if we really, if you, if you take the modern context of things, I'm going to get this in before the break. The modern context, you know, plasma ships, light ships, uh, interdimensionality, uh, uh, different uh, voices from above, channeling, all, all of the, the, the modern aspect of what we know today, it is, it is exactly that way and presented that way in the Bible. There isn't another way to look at it. It's the same story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. And it's, it's funny yeah. how, if you were to look at it and compare it line by line, you would see tremendous similarities in that, a way that you're kind of like, it's, history's repeating itself. Yeah, some of the biblical scholars that um, have referenced things to me, let me look at the clock. Okay, 90 seconds. Things like, okay, when you talk about, you know, the kingdom of heaven and, and, and what is being represented on earth as it is in heaven, and, you know, things like this, where I talk to a, a scholar in biblical things, they will say, well, they're talking about other planets. They're talking about another dimension. That's just the verbiage. And then you, you look at it that way, and you're like, a, well, yeah. It, it's just it's it's there if somebody of uh, 2000 years ago trying to uh um verbalize and 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 write out what that would be right kingdoms of heaven or another mm -hmm. rumor that 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 they wouldn't have another way to do it. they they didn't have a science fiction movie to base things on you know what mm -hmm. i mean they didn't have that perspective right. And it's the way that it's written in the Bible, and it just makes a lot of sense. It is interesting, yeah. and it's something that most people will think of it from a religious point of view, but we strongly urge them not to. Let's uh, let's take our break right here. Let me get this in. This is Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, Jack Roth, John Sumpel, their new film. It's going to premiere at the Pasadena Film Festival. Are you ready? Extraordinary, the revelations. I am your host, Jimmy Church. We'll be right back after this short break. Way out here, we listen to Jimmy Church. You're listening to Fade to Black. Always on the edge of the hottest alternative talk, Jimmy Church with Fade to Black, KGRARadio.com. ¿Qué tal, mis amigos? Yo soy Mario Carson, el tiburón, y los invito para que escuchen mi buen amigo, Jimmy Church Radio. Claro que sí. Do you want to be an official fade or not? Of course you do. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black. Just go to our membership section at jimmychurchradio.com. This is Jimmy Church, and I invite you to attend the 20th Annual Los Angeles Conscious Life Expo live and in person this September 17th, 18th, and 19th at the LAX Airport Hilton. Connect with exhibitors, community, thought leaders, and friends as we begin to recreate the world. You can also watch the expo from the comfort of your own home, live stream from the main stage in Los Angeles and from the main stage in London. Truly a global simulcast event broadcast around the world. Live stream and in-person expo tickets are available now. I'll be your host all weekend long from Los Angeles. And on Friday, it's my Ancient Secrets and Earth Mysteries themed segment with James Keenan. Caroline Corey and William Henry. And on Saturday, Daniel Sheen and I sit down for a one-on-one -on -one interview live. We have an amazing lineup of 25 speakers, including Bashar, Gail Thackeray, Kimberly Meredith, Whitley Strieber, Stephen Bassett, Daniel Brinkley, and Lisa Gar. Please visit ConsciousLifeExpo.com for tickets and info. That's ConsciousLifeExpo.com. And use that promo code JIMMY for a special discount. 
Fade or not, when you think about the future of our country and where we're headed, do you wonder about the food supply? I do. Disruptions in the food supply chain could be disastrous, and they usually occur with little warning. That's why the smartest thing you can do today is to stockpile emergency food, water, and other essentials. I personally recommend My Patriot Supply. They're the nation's largest emergency preparedness company, serving millions of customers for more than a decade. In fact, they're the only source my family trusts for our preparedness plan. You should too. Right now, save 20% off a full four-week supply of delicious meals that provide 2,000 calories a day. Saving 20% helps too, doesn't it? Especially now. So go to preparewithjimmy.com and get ready. That's preparewithjimmy.com. There's no time to lose. Do it now. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. You listen to us, and we listen to you. And so does the CIA. <laughs> KGRARadio.com. You are listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Oi, oi, I'm Reese Evans. You're listening to Jimmy Church. This is Revolution. The Revolution will not be televised. The revolution is on radio. Ciao. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, John Sumpel and Jack Roth are here. We are introducing their new film, Extraordinary, The Revelations. More with John and Jack after this quick message about Virtual Shield. VirtualShield.com. Get your VPN today. I have a gnarly studio. Lots of computers. Everything has an Ethernet cable plugged into it to send out onto the Internet. And I use VPN and Virtual Shield on everything because I want to be private. I don't want anybody to know or find out my location. I don't want them to know my search history. I don't want them to know nothing. But that's the world we are in today. You have encrypted servers all around the world. You have a strict no-log policy. Your internet is your own. Get Virtual Shield today. You can click on the video link. In the description box below, you can go to jimmychurchradio.com, click on any of the banners over there, or you can type into your search bar, virtualshield.com forward slash fade to black, and do any of those three things, and you will get Virtual Shield today for 50% off. All right, all right, do it now. Our guest tonight, John Semple and, and Jack Roth. Now, we discussed um, Act 1 and uh, no coughing in the uh, microphones, uh, Jack. That, that that was Jack, John. That wasn't that wasn't me or you. Um, no, it wasn't me. You know. <laughs> Someone else is listening. Uh, let's let's go to um, Act Two. And it was funny earlier uh, when Jack said, "John, what how, what did we end up doing? What was first? <laughs> I'm saying, what was what uh, what was Act Two, John?" Well, I just want to just want to you're you're mentioning it in act two and just for clarity, the, the three acts of the film are first act is historical. Second act is paradigms. And you're talking about the three yeah. acts within the second act, the three paradigms. The third act is government related. So within that second act, there's three 
parts. There's so three th acts within the three scenes within the, the second act. So yes, in those it's par the the paradigms are uh, we've talked about colonization with Dr. Jacobs. We've talked about the biblical narrative with L.A. Marzulli and uh, Timothy Alberino. And then the one that we haven't talked about is Ascension, and Mary Rodwell leads that conversation. But we have, I mean, there's there's bigger pieces to that one, and I think this the, this is the one that I think is going to resonate with. I don't want to say most people, but with a lot of people, because it's the one I think people are most familiar with. People aren't as familiar with the biblical narrative. They're not as familiar with the the colonization. And the reason why we wanted to give these three equal weight is so that people did know about the different alternative belief structures around the concept of ufology. And and all believe in the same thing, but the outcomes are all very, very different. And, and, and I think one of the, the highlights in the, 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 the second part, which is the ascension, is that we uh, introduce Vivian Chavez, who is an Arcturian hybrid. And she serves a very important role in this film because she talks about being the bridge, the bridge to what was and what will be and how hybrids are here to help people with this ascension process. And uh, there is, uh, uh, a, a, again, for, for me, this film is it, it's, it's great for the UFO community. But for the rest of the world that has heard about E.T. and contact and possible life in the universe and, and our Milky Way and, and UFOs and they've seen pictures, but they don't necessarily know any of this and how complex the issues uh, truly are. And so when you get to a Ascension or an Arcturian hybrid and, and the messaging from out there to here, most of the world has has never heard about this before. No, they haven't. And, and it is, John's right, it is complex. There's complexities within each paradigm. So um, first, I have to say that I feel like with Vivian Chauvet and also Krista Risa, who we interviewed for this, I have to give them credit because there takes a lot of courage. I feel like the, these people, people who are either hybrids or who can communicate in some kind of way with ETs that have a special gift, if you will. Uh, it's, it's not easy being them. And I think they get, there's a lot of ridicule that comes with that because they're, they're perceiving the world in a different way than we do because of a, a of a gift or something that they're capable of doing that we're not. It's like a psychic or a intuitive and give them so much credit for coming on and talking because that's, it's, it's risky. I think it's hard. It's hard to put yourself out there like that, but you're right though. I think, you know, when you talk about Ascension, it's, it's, it's about Ascension of, it's almost like our, the evolution of humanity. And, you know, John and I sometimes refer to as love and light. So it's all positive that all the ETs are here to help us ascend. They're, they're here to help us uh, uh, get to the next step in our evolution. The way I look at that is to become cosmic neighbors, right? To finally get to that point where we're not destroying ourselves and we grow up enough to say uh, to for them to let us into that group, right? That you know, hey, now you can be a cosmic neighbor because you're not destructive and childish. Um, so that's that's a big part of that. But when they talk about these things, sometimes it's you really have to listen because it's 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 interesting the way they talk about it, even and, and the way Vivian sometimes she'll she'll start talking about her Arcturian guides and our, it it I I feel like it'll challenge some people. Because they'll be like, well, what does that mean? Or how does that work? But I think the important message there and the message we got from them is that we have to understand that there are ETs out there without question who are benevolent and they're trying to help us. And I think that we can all wrap our heads around that. The only part that I that some of us would say, well, there's also maybe malevolent ETs, that there's some ETs out there that really don't care about our well-being. And I think it really, in the end, it's a combination of both. But I, I feel like that the ascension part of the film is going to be the warm and fuzzy part of the film to make people are going to feel good about that. And and there's a lot to be said for it. There, um, when um, uh, somebody 
uh, 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 sent me a, a screen grab of, of the cast uh, with a comment like, holy crap, how did you guys pull this off? And and I didn't really... Lori you know, Wagner. Yeah, right, Lori <laughs> Wagner. <laughs> oh, she just texted me and said, thank you, uh, by the way. Um, but uh, there are, you know, Billy Carson, you know, great, Richard Dolan and, and David Jacobs, Melinda Leslie, L.A. Marzulli, Nick Pope, George Norrie, Mary Rodwell, um, and, and, of course, Clifford Stone, who we talked about. But there are a couple of other uh, pretty good gets in this, um, uh, which I was totally blown away. One is Lynn Buchanan, <laughs> right? And yes. that was a big get. That was a big get. That's a big get right there. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, Lynn's past, and uh, this is, uh, and for the audience who may not know who Lynn Buchanan is, uh, John, let me let me throw that over to you. Uh, tell everybody who uh, uh, Lynn Buchanan and his importance to not only ufology in this community, but uh, but the history behind him. Well, the the, the 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 easiest connection that we can make is that uh, the, the movie The Men Who Stare at Goats was basically based on the whole remote viewing project, with Lynn kind of being a central point in that and and the remote viewing was definitely a uh, a legitimate government intelligence resource gathering outfit uh troop or uh, what's the word uh, uh what they they talk we talked about in the project film, blank right project so they, they, these people were one of the things that that lynn says in the film that to me is just if you ever were questioning whether the government or military was involved and aware, he said that five times during the course of his involvement during the military, his group was disbanded and reclassified the next day each time after it was it was disbanded. So that tells you very clearly that the government valued the work that they were doing. And they did it consistently and had a, an 85 plus accuracy record with the work that they were doing. So to have somebody talk about it, and, and Lynn holds the cards very close to his chest. Uh, we're not going to get him to come. He always you know, has. Out and, he always has. But we, yeah. but the, what he did share in the film is, is profound in what he doesn't say. <laughs> so uh, it, it makes it, you can make, you can make they're not leaps; they're small steps to the the, the realities based on what he does share in the film. And uh, 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 Jack, when you I don't know how much you knew about Lynn uh, before the film, but uh, his importance cannot be measured. Number one, but but the other part is we know about Ingo Swan, right? And Hal put off, and we can. Uh, uh, Russell Targ uh, and the other piece to this to this puzzle and probably one of the most important ones is Lynn Buchanan he was there he was in the middle of all of this at every level and he is talented right? I mean he's got he's got real talent um, yeah. Sergeant Lynn Buchanan uh, it, what did what did you learn from Lynn well, I learned that he's a, a very humble man, and he doesn't like to take credit for much. Uh, it's almost like he's an incredibly laid back for considering what he's done in his life. <laughs> right. But he's 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 gracious. He'll absolutely talk to you forever. There are things he won't say, but for us, it was like we were trying to get to that one thing of what's that we wanted to make that connect, government. ETs, these projects, right? These black projects. And he does it in a way that he knows, but you know, he wasn't again, not going to say a lot, but he said enough that the audience will see when they, when they watch the film. And I, I think he's just a fantastic human being. And, and, and you're right. He's, he's so talented. He has, but he, he underplays that. He so does. He, he does it with everything. Well, it was what we did. <laughs> you know, it was kind of, right. And he's, he's, but he's just so, and you're there and, and him and his wife, they just make you feel so comfortable. Um, mm -hmm. and that, that was a highlight. I, we keep saying that every time you bring someone up, it was a highlight. Everyone was a highlight. That's the kind of film this was to make. 
<laughs> you know. You know, um, and, and 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 from a historical perspective, uh, you know, George Nori has been a part of this community for a long time, and 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 Lynn Buchanan and Nick Pope, and then uh, you you brought uh, some other faces uh, to this project and introducing them to the world. Um, and I, I, I do want to mention, you know, Billy Carson, where Billy five years ago wasn't part of this community. Uh, today, he's a central part of this community. And what he brings is not only so valuable and he's so well spoken, but that that guy has got knowledge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were yeah. so impressed, <laughs> so impressed with what he brought to the interview because there was nothing that we could, everything was on the table. He was ready to talk about anything. And what is so great about him too is the conviction in what he says. There's no, there's, he's not on the fence on anything. He believes what he believes and it's based on his research. So, and, and, and that's right. very much appreciated with everybody that we talked to. Nobody's coming at this with, uh, you know, uh, ambivalence or with a, uh, a, a, discernment uh, I think that that some of us bring to this as we go because we have to do that too there's discernment that we have to do uh, so uh, but when you talk to people who are convicted in what they believe it, it adds so much to the storytelling because you're bringing a perspective that uh, that will resonate with people and we the hardest thing with making a film like this is to serve a broad audience uh, uh, because each person looking at it might want something more. I think I've been monitoring the, uh, the, the, the comments in chat and I think people are like, well, you guys are all over the place. You're talking about all these different things and like, well, we're trying to, we're trying to cover everything. So there's only much, so much you can do in a short amount of time. These subjects really, we, we could be on your show every night for a month mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and still be talking about something new. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that, that it's so hard for us to, um, really go through the process that we've gone through and explain it to people is the information that comes to us that isn't necessarily captured on film, but comes to us in those side moments, the honesty, the purity, the emotion is it, 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 it changes you. Jack, I think you would, you would agree. Well, and, and oh, Jack, what? I wanted to ask you about Billy because you're in Florida. Billy's in Florida, so you were there for for his portion of the film. Yeah, well, yeah, we we actually filmed him uh, in was it uh, Palm Springs? Oh, I yeah. thought you, I thought you got to go out to uh, Billy's pad. No, not no, and and you know what's interesting? I had never I had heard of Billy, but I never hear I've never heard I didn't, hadn't heard him speak, and was blown away by him because he was just so concise and so well-spoken and, and so intelligent in the way he just processed things in his mind. And he really added another dimension that we didn't think we were going to get. And I remember when John was going through the footage with the editing, he's like, you know, Billy's incredible. And, and he kept saying, and, it, and I, he, we'd have these conversations and it was like, you know, Nick was incredible. Uh, you know, Mary was incredible and uh, go on and on. I do want to give a quick shout out to Richard Dolan, uh, because he's our, he's, we love him and he's just an encyclopedia. I, I, there's, there's not enough I can say about Richard, but I definitely wanted to give him a shout out because he's been our last two films. It's been a big part of the last two films. And I feel like I, I always go back to his books, uh, uh, UFOs in the National Security State, mm -hmm. part one and two, as if I had to tell anyone who was getting into this field, read those two books first. That's how important those two books are, in my opinion. So big, big shout out to Richard, <laughs> who's also in the film. Yeah, no, no doubt about that. And uh, check this out. I'm going to Egypt in a few months with Billy Carson. Oh, very cool. yeah, man. I, I, I you know, he, he's oh. there right now. He's in Egypt right now, uh, doing a little, uh, prep, uh, for our trip that's coming up. But, but how cool is it going to be to have, uh, to, to, to follow him into a temple complex and to listen to what he has to say about, uh, this journey, uh, that we're, we're going to go on. We're going to be there for, uh, 14 days, 15 days. 
And wow. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Two, That's going to be amazing. Yeah, two weeks in Egypt with uh, Billy Carson. Um, uh, now, oh, 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 I, I, I want to circle. Let me look at the clock. Okay. I want to circle back to Mary Rodwell for a second. Um, Mary's, uh, again, what she brings to the film is, is unbelievable. But, um, Mary, uh, a lot like Lori in a very strange way, um, uh, Mary is so well researched and, also has a way and an ability to introduce us to all of these uh, different, not only, I, I don't want to say abductees, but contactees um, of a wide range of age, you know, from children, which is tough for a lot of people to, to, um, uh, to wrap their head around, but kids are contactees too. And, and Mary's research is unbelievable. And, and I think uh, her section of the film is something that everybody really needs to pay attention to. Um, and uh, uh, I want your comment on that first, Jack. Um, Mary's intelligence and the way that she approaches this, it's different than any other researcher. It is. And again, I keep saying this, and I sound like a broken record, but so impressive. Uh, her Her the amount of knowledge she has in that head and just the, but again, it's the way she perceives things, the way she understands things. And uh, I, I have her book, the new human mm -hmm. and I have, I'm about to read it and I'm very excited to read it because some of the things she's talking about and some of the research she's done in her life and continues to do is really cutting edge because you're right. Children, it's difficult with children but it's also, I feel, critical, especially in this field, because I feel like children are a key to all of this in one way, shape, or form, whether they're hybrid children, whether they're uh, indigo children. You know, why are, are they the next step in our evolution? Is our, our, is, does autism tie into this? I mean, she blew our minds, right, John? I mean, like, it's yeah. one of those conversations that you have with her that some of it is actually in the film, but there's so much that it's just a conversation that we're, our jaws were on the ground. John. Yeah. In the same way that when we, when we first were introduced to um, Sierra Nablina 10 years ago and we heard her story, we were like, gosh, that, that, that story is amazing. We, we need to do more research on it. And it was the unexplained pr pregnancies that led us to a film about specifically that topic. Uh, the interview with Mary, by the time we were done, we were talking to her about, we need to do a, a completely dedicated documentary film on the new hum on the new humans and your research into that. And one of the things that I think, uh, was my, one of my biggest takeaways from the interviews that we did during this, this, this project was talking with Dr. Jacobs, talking with Mary and talking with, uh, George Servos, who nobody knows, uh, and he's a biblical scholar. Uh, and talking to them is what level of expertise they bring is all based on their research. And nobody can question their research because it's done beyond reproach. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when you have these, these experts like this saying, I've done the work, I've done the heavy lifting, I've done the deep dive into my subjects, this is what I'm founding, you need to pay attention to this. We do, we do any researcher a disservice if we don't listen to what they have to say. And if what they're pointing to is proof, we need to start listening to that. And Dr. Jacobs said when went off camera talking to him, he was he got emotional. He says, like, I'm sick and tired of people saying they need proof. He says, I've been doing it, Bud Hopkins has been doing it, John Mack had been doing it. We've been doing all this research for decades, and there's a overwhelming amount of proof. It's in the, the stories that people are telling that are corroborative. What more proof do you need than, than, than the, the, the work that has been done up till this point? So Mary has done that work. Dr. Jacobs has done that work. Bud Hopkins, John Mack, you know, there's a long, long list of people who've done, done the pioneers and the heavy lifting. And there will be more people who carry that torch forward. We just need to pay attention a little bit more and trust that the people who've done the heavy lifting and the hard work and the deep dives are, are delivering information that we should pay attention to, as opposed to clouding our, our judgment based on something that we may have learned uh, off the cuff or through a, a, a one hour research dive on YouTube. So I think like Jack said, reading the book, 
read the book, read the book, get into it, understand a little more, pose the questions, meet with people, talk with people. That's what we're trying to do with our film is scratch the surface, reach as enough people as we possibly can and get them to, you know, ponder something for the first time. Gosh, I, I'd never heard of the biblical paradigm before. I, 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 maybe I should pay attention to what Timothy and LA are saying. Let me, let me go and do a little bit of research or geez, what's this colonization stuff? Should I be concerned about it? I got to find out more about Dr. Jacobs or with any of the people, you know, Vivian Chavez is a, is a Arcturian hybrid. What does that mean? Go, go do the research, learn. You're going to be much better for it as a result of taking that dive. Now, there's uh, something uh, uh, I've got. Uh, I want your reactions, both of you, before the break. We've got uh, two minutes. Is that the film, uh, I'm going to say we because I've been a part of it. Uh, so I'll, I'll just say we because I can. But <clears throat> we've been working on this film now for almost two years. And <laughs> the timing of it, is awesome but the part of the, the it's timeless so the subject matter the, this film could be released anytime it's great that it's coming out when it is right now but it doesn't have a dated aspect to it it's a timeless film and anybody can watch this at any point and get something from it because it's not time stamped jack uh, your response to that yeah, I totally agree with you. And, uh, you know, you know, the filmmaking process is the filmmaking process. I mean, some of that you know, we have no control over. Uh, you know, we have a budget. We have we have investors. You know, we, we have to have the money to finish the film. So that was going to happen the way it was going to happen. And then, of course, the distributor has a say in, well, what's the best time now that the film's almost done? What's the best time for it to come out? Right. So that's all stuff that we really don't have too much control over. But the actual... Yes, you are correct. And I feel like there's a reason why we wanted to make these films now. Why why 10 years ago were we like so fascinated with starting this process? There's something happening, I think, in all of us that we're realizing that now is a very critical time. We can't say, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen what's going to happen next week. But yes, the films are, they, they're timeless, but I also think that right now they're very important. It, very it, important. It's, it's crazy how the two work together, and, 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 which is my point. It's actually happening. Um, and, and John, how fortunate is it that the film is coming out now, not six months ago, right? Now is the important time for this thing to to hit the streets and get watched. And it has this timeless aspect to it. Yeah. I think what we're, we, I think a little bit lucky, you know, there, like Jack said, there's funding, you know, people, it does cost money to make films like this and it doesn't, you know, grow on trees. I wish it did. We'd do more of them, <laughs> but you know, the funding part of it is, is critically important. COVID definitely had a play in it. There were people that were lost jobs and when the opportunity to make money appeared, you know, that became a priority and therefore we need to table certain things. So all of these things kind of led to, from a timing perspective, that this is coinciding with a lot of messages that are very, very, uh, I don't want to say similar, but but, uh, critically important in parallel with this, and 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 it it's creating more of an awareness in the consciousness that when people are hearing about these things, we're hoping that our story is associated with it, not for fame and glory or anything like that, but again for that education, for raising awareness on something that people who are more in the center of the bell curve may not have given much thought to. If we do this right, we get people uh, across the spectrums talking about it, engaging in it. And if if we had a, our best wish would be is that people are having water cooler conversations about the content, not necessarily the film, but the content. And Jack, he says uh, fame and glory, uh, but that that's all well and good. But I can see behind John, he's got his suit for the Pasadena Film Festival hanging up. <laughs> In the background, with I the, noticed with the that. Tag. Yeah, you saw it. <laughs> Let's take our break right here. <laughs> this is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. It's actually my wife. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Fair enough. He put it on his wife. Jack Roth, John Sumple, their new film. We're going to pick up or we're leaving off, but we've got to get to the now now when we come back. Stay with us. Hi, everybody. This is Rob Halford, the Metal Guard, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. This is KGRA Digital Broadcasting Station. 
Salt Lake City, Utah, Van Buren, Arkansas. Why is it we're not very good with our health regiment? until it's too late. We don't put oil in the car until the engine blows up. When the body's out of balance, your health is not so good. Give your body some love. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Try our Life Change Tea, which cleanses you from harmful intruders. A clean colon is one of the ways to bring the body in balance. We also carry organic supplements to help you get where you need to go. So do your body a favor. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. You can even visit our sales page to save some dough. Uh, Does anybody call money dough anymore? Anyway, if you're looking for short, helpful health tips, go to YouTube and punch in Health Matters Now. That's Health Matters Now. So, log on to GetTheTea.com, shop, get balanced, then learn some cool tips at Health Matters Now. You'll be glad you did. That's GetTheTea.com. Your contact for current news and trending topics. KGRARadio.com. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and I only drink Fade to Black blend coffee from River Moon. Just click on the River Moon Coffee banner at jimmychurchradio.com. Promo code F2B Blend. This is the only way forward. This is Fade to Black. Make contact. KGRARadio.com. When you're in the house for longer periods of time, you can see them flying or running across the floor. Ooh, yuck. They're unhealthy, gross, and disgusting. Bugs. I loathe bugs. We keep a clean home, but occasionally bugs show up. Well, I found something that is tougher than bugs. Orange Guard. On contact, it kills hidden bugs, including ants, roaches, and fleas. Plus, Orange Guard is a residual repellent. All of the ingredients of Orange Guard are on the FDA generally recognized as safe list. Orange Guard may be used around food, humans, and pets. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Orange Guard, available at orangeguard.com, Whole Foods, and Ace Hardware. Gold loves chaos, uncertainty, and disarray. History shows us what gold does when people aren't sure, aren't sure about the government, the stock market, their jobs, or their retirement savings. Our national debt is skyrocketing. Gold and other precious metals are a defense measure against inflation and a stock market that might take years to recover. So what can you do right now to protect yourself? Call United Gold Group. We offer gold and other precious metals delivered securely within 72 hours. Are you worried about the stock market? We can also help you set up a real gold or silver IRA or a 401k. Safe and secure. United Gold Group makes gold ownership affordable. Call now and get up to $2,500 in free gold or silver with a qualified IRA. Call 800-753-8534. That's 800-753-8534 or visit unitedgoldgroup.com. You want to know a secret? I love ponies. I really love ponies. I'm serious. I couldn't stay sane without ponies to brush. Why fade to black? Because you never got that pony. Damn it. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. Welcome back, Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, John Sumpel, Jack Roth, their new film, Extraordinary, The Revelations. Now, it's going to premiere at the uh, Pasadena Film Festival. I want everybody, I'll, I'll get all the links up in social media uh, for you to go and check out uh, the, the location and time. But it will be Saturday, September 11th, uh, the premiere in Pasadena at the, at the film festival. We have the trailer up 
on our YouTube channel. And I've also got the movie poster and uh, I've uh, put that up too as well. And I'll get that out on social media. It's all very cool. Now, um, I, I'm, I'm going to change gears just a little bit here in that um, I do an intro. It's not about me, but uh, there's, there's a reason for me to say this. I do an intro at the beginning of the film setting the stage, but I also do an outro. And I thought that that outro uh, was probably more important than the intro to the film. And, and John, you put a lot of stress on me <laughs> when we, <laughs> when we cut that about how important that outro was and, and for you personally, um, the emphasis on that and not only the words and the content, but how to the very last words, uh, that I narrate in, in, in the film are probably more important than the beginning. But this is, uh, this is my point to saying all of this. We did all of that before the UAP task force report, right? And, mm -hmm. and, and I find all of that very interesting because we didn't even know about the UAPTF. <laughs> we didn't know about the report. We didn't know what was about to uh, explode over the next uh, eight, uh, six or eight months uh, g going up to last month, right? June 25th. Um, right. when, when you saw the report, when it came out, knowing that you just completed this film, what went through your mind as you read the report? Well, I, I think the, the, the biggest thing, uh, for me is that, you know, Jack had mentioned earlier, you kind of feel like you're, you're guided through, we've kind of felt that we've been guided through this process to it, to an certain extent. And this is not a woo woo thing. It's just kind of, sometimes you're in the right place at the right time with the right story and the right connections. And I feel like that's a big part of what we're doing. So from a, from a, a, a timing perspective for the information that is coming out, I think in, in, let me even rewind a little bit back to when we were doing the interview uh, with Nick Pope. Nick kind of set the table for us during the interview with him. And I would say of all the people that are in this film, Nick has probably the most profound information that is shared in this film. And he kind of led us down the path of something is coming. You know, you guys, in, in, even when we interviewed him, he said at the time, he goes, this is the perfect time for this film. So we, we kind of knew maybe based on what he knows and he didn't, you know, come out and say, here's what you need to know. I, here's what I'm hearing from the insiders. But he did share it in a way is that we're moving towards something and the timing of this film couldn't be better. So they're, they're in the back of our minds. I think we felt like uh, we're aligned with something here. Uh, in some ways, we kind of stumbled on it. In other ways, it's been leading to this point for a decade. Uh, so when when that came out, it wasn't it was it wasn't as much of a goosebump moment as much as it was a validation type of things. Like we're 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 doing something that serves a purpose, and it feels like we're at the right place at the right time. Jack, I don't know if you felt any differently, but that was kind of my take. Jack, yeah, totally agree with that. And right place, right time, but also um, interesting, right? Um, to to think about all the people we've spoken to. Think about we, where we go with these films and then think about what that report is saying. And it, it, I feel like there's still a long way to go, right? We talk about disclosure. Well, I think the key there is, is it going to be full disclosure, right? We could talk about the military saying, well, yeah, they're there. <laughs> right? Like these reports are, we, we follow these things. We track them. They're not from, we didn't, it's not us the technology is way beyond us. So they're kind of admitting that these phenomena are real. That's what that's all they're saying. We are already way down the road on that with, you know, high, you know, abductions, hybridization programs. I don't think that the government and the military is going to come out tomorrow and say, Oh, and by the way, we, we knew about this. They've been doing this. They're not only here, but, you know, there's hybrid children and all this. I think they're, I think they're always going to control the message. I think it's important what's happening right now, but I think it's going to be a process because I don't – if they're going to control the message, they can't come out and say, oh, by the way, 
we knew about hybridization experiments and thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of people, citizens across this world being abducted. So there's levels and layers to that. But I do think it's important that at least they're acknowledging and finally not calling everything swamp gas. Yeah, there's, uh, I think that's a big part of it. But you, there's uh, a point that both of you uh, just made that I find very interesting and, and I agree with. It's not so much what they said. It's what they didn't say. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> they left. Right. That it was very cleverly written. So if you are going to say um, uh, it's not us, it's not Russia. It's not China. Uh, okay. <laughs> right. Wait, wait a minute. What's left, you know? And so they cleverly inserted the other bin, right? I mean, how, how crazy was that? John, what went through your mind? The other bin, the, uh, I'm sorry, Jane, it, I was it, reading. It, it, yeah. some comments here and, and texting I'm trying to do it's kind of not smart to do both at the same time but what was the context of the question again I'm sorry. in the UAP task force report it's what they didn't write and when they say that it's not us and it's not Russia and it's not China and what's left right there's right. a third category yeah. here and then they conveniently created the other bin right and 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 that's that's intentional you know, uh, the, one of the things that uh, that Nick Pope talks about in the film is the the, the it's, you have to listen to what they don't say as much as you do to what they do say. And, uh, you know, he, he says, I bring a little bit of discernment to that because of my being on the other side of the fence. I know when they're using language and a big part of what Nick talks about in the film is that words matter and you need to listen to what is being said as much as you listen to what isn't being said in and drawing some conclusions. And he draws some pretty big conclusions in the end of the film as a result of what isn't being said. So critically important to pay attention to those things. And I, I think that, that Nick kind of opened my eyes uh, to that possibility of paying attention to it from that perspective, which I really didn't pay much attention to before, but now I'm kind of like, Oh yeah, we, we, sh- we, we need to listen to what isn't being said just as closely. Now, before we run out of time, Jack, I tried to, I'm going to, I'm going to do this with John too. So John, don't think you're getting off easy. Okay. Um, but Jack, uh, I, I was in the beginning of the show, I was trying to get out of you. If you have had your own contact experience, if you've seen something in the sky or something beyond that, something that drew you into this, uh, community, have you seen something in the sky? Have you made contact? Uh, well, yeah, I'll go back to before when we first got into the doing these documentaries, I guess it was about 10 years ago with Stan and all that and his story, I had never had what I would call a definitive UFO encounter or sighting. What's interesting is that since then I've had some experiences. I did see a, uh, oddly enough, uh, it was incredible experience. Uh, I was actually with, (laughs) it was controversial, but I was with Stan Romanick and his wife and we were at a conference in Sebring, Florida. And if anyone knows Florida and Sebring, Sebring's right in the middle of the state. There's nothing there, but a, a racetrack and a resort. That's it. And, uh, I was there with a couple people. We were outside and we were just hanging out and I, I kid you not, this triangular shaped craft flew right over our heads. Now, whether that was a coincidence that Stan was there or not, I do not know. And I dare not say, but, uh, that was my first sighting. Uh, and then the other thing I would say is that we had weird experiences during that time as well with some interesting phone calls that we were getting in very unlikely ways that made us think that it was very, very, the technology was something that we had never experienced before. So, High strangeness, a UFO sighting, yes, uh, since then. Uh, I think my intuition now has gone through the roof from where it was 10 years ago. Right. I think I'm a more enlightened person and more sensitive to that stuff. Right. Uh, so that's what I would say. I, you know, not, I, I don't think I've ever been abducted. I don't have any memories that I can remember. I just don't. I don't see that in, 
as as having happened to me. Uh, but other stuff since we've been involved in this, yeah. And uh, before I uh, pass this over to John, when you say triangle, was this at night or during the day? It was nighttime. It was nighttime. And I would, so it when was you say time, so when you say triangle, how do you know it was a triangle? What did you see? There were, th- it was three lights on each end of it. So it was the, a light on each end of the craft and you could kind of see the outline of it. The moon was out and, Oh man. Um, it was a fair, yeah. And, and what was really strange, it was the word that I always tell people is stealth. You couldn't hear it. We were lucky to see it. It was actually, and my it wasn't friend far was like, away, Oh my right, God, John? look at that. What's that? He said it was John it said wasn't it wasn't far, far away. away. Wasn't no, I, it was about, I would say about 10,000 feet up. And if you, you know, could see a triangle at that distance, it must have been pretty big. It seemed like it was big. And, and, but again, I think the thing that stuck out to me the most was how stealthy it was. It was, it was made not to be seen or heard. Uh, obviously they had the lights, but if I didn't look up, right. right. If we didn't, if my friend hadn't looked up at that second, it would have passed right over and we wouldn't have seen it. Um, but it was, I, I, I got so excited and it was funny cause I, I, I it was, Ever there was an old there's an old joke with, among amongst us where it's like well Jack's never seen John he'll tell you his stories I'd never seen anything before as, as interested as I am in this I couldn't say I saw anything definitive this was definitive and I I tell people I either saw one of two things I saw a uh, ET craft or I saw a military aircraft that we're not supposed to know exists. Could that be back engineered from alien technology? Right, so either right. way, I felt pretty excited. <laughs> Man, that that's that's a class A sighting right there. I've uh, I've only seen one uh, triangle, and I didn't know it was a triangle until I looked at the picture that I took. It was a black dot, right, that I saw, and then uh, you know I got the picture and I put a jeweler's loop on it, and I was like, oh, holy crap! Wow, it's a black triangle. I mean, like. A, a black triangle. Uh, it's an incredible picture, and I'll I'll share it with you guys on film. You know, I took it on a film camera, so uh, I have the negative and and uh, th- this picture, which still to this day it's 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 incredible. But I would have been much more excited if I would have known it was a black triangle, right? It was just a black dot that stopped, moved across the sky, and then shot up. Uh, and went into uh, uh, the atmosphere, just just gone up into the blue. And a couple of months later, I developed the film, and there it was. Wow. It was a black triangle. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Not as cool as yours, but it was pretty cool. John, uh, yes. give, give me your sighting. What, what's the one? Uh, well, I, I, I mean, I was fortunate, I guess, when I was young. Uh, I was... Uh, around, I guess, 10, 11, 12 years old. I had three sightings uh, within a couple year span. Two of them were very similar, lights moving across the uh, sky at a very rapid pace and stop, stopping on a dime across the horizon at speeds that would be almost impossible. And these were at dusk, so they it wasn't um, you know dark and it was off in the distance, but I wasn't the only one that witnessed it. My father saw it, called us out, saw it. Other people saw it, a lot of reports. Uh, but one I saw sitting on my front porch with a friend of mine, we saw a craft go down into the woods that were in front of uh, the house where I lived in uh, Connecticut. And uh, it was, you know, the classic kind of uh, saucer-shaped, disc-shaped object that had uh, uh, alternating lights, and it just went straight down. It was it was like a helicopter landing, but had no sound. So that was the one that, to me, that when I looked at my friend, we were kind of like, did you just see that too? And he says, yeah, I saw it. And we had some friends that were down the street, and we both got up and ran down the street to see if they had seen it as, as well, and nobody else saw it. And we're like, you guys didn't see that? It was it was just right over, I mean, where we were standing, we were pointing, to, it was just right over there. How did you not see it? But we both saw it. I knew that I wasn't you know, seeing things. So my eyes were open to the possibilities. I was also fortunate too, that my dad was involved in, um, a project where uh, the company, the, the engineering firm that he worked for, developed a touchdown light on the lunar module, the first lunar module. On so he was tuned in to everything with the space program and brought all of that home. 
and I was tuned into it and what, you know, started studying the universe from a very galactic perspective as a 10 year old. And uh, so I was tuned into the vastness of space and questioned how we could be alone at a very young age. So there was, I, I've always had this sensibility of we're galactic beings. We're not earthbound. Earth is just a container. And, and we're, if we choose to stay inside the container, we don't, we don't get it. We don't see the, the bigger picture. So, um, uh, I have somebody here that is asking a question in Connecticut. I was born and raised in Newtown, Connecticut, and uh, was there for uh, when that sighting was, was probably in the early 70s. So uh, if if you were around that same time and you saw it, bit M, let me know. But yeah, So those, John's those, doing those, his those, own those AMA period. right now. He's doing, <laughs> I know. He's doing his own AMA. I'm multitasking. I'm, I'm watching. I'm, multitasking. I'm watching. <laughs> you, you can, can you see John? John is just, just he's just. You know, oh, what'd you say? Uh, can can you ask the question again? I'm too <laughs> yeah, busy, too like busy doing my AMA in the chat. Um, <laughs> I wanted to check this out. Now, I told the audience about this. I'm going to share this with you two. Uh, I told the audience about this. Uh, uh, this happened three weeks ago, and everything that I should have done, I didn't do. Okay, all right. I made all the classic mistakes, but this is what happened. I was south. Uh, this is. Three weeks ago, and this story is so, this sighting is so crazy, but it happened. I'm, I'm south of Edwards Air Force Base um, on the closest street that I could get to three weeks ago. And, uh, and I'm standing there, and I could see in front of me two radio towers, and I could see the red lights on the top, right? And there's like a, a berm. It's in the desert, right? Okay, so there was like this thing in front of me. It was at night. So I couldn't really see what was in front of me. If there was a fence there, and I thought that there might have been a fence. Um, I'm parked on the side of the road. I get out of my car, I go across the street, and I'm looking at it. And at that moment, and I'm standing on the side of the road, no traffic, I'm in the middle of the desert. At that moment, this is what happens. In front of me, in front of the two radio towers, in the middle, this frigging thing in the blackness, this ring of blue white lights goes once around in a circle i was like what the heck what no what <laughs> right and I'm, so i'm looking in that spot and then it kind of flutters right like jitters on the front of it and i'm thinking oh it's a blimp oh but over edwards right okay all right and i'm looking and then it goes again and now i see it is round and now I'm thinking it's just one lap, you know, these lights, but I, I could see it on the front and then on the back the, where the lights are lighting up, I could see the shadow, right? Of the, the, this, whatever it is. Now I'm thinking there's a third radio tower and maybe this is something on the top, you know, warning for the planes, you know, it, it, you know that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> now in my right hand is my cell phone down at my side and this happened so quick and then i was like okay all right i gotta shoot a video this is this is too cool so i get my phone ready and and i'm now i'm good nothing happens i stand there for a half an hour i missed it right and so i go back uh to my jeep and i drive away and i'm just like what was that but I thought that there was a third radio tower. That's, I resolved it in my mind. The next day, I go back. And I go back at like 11 o'clock in the morning. And I go back and I, I, I go the same road and I pulled over and there's my tire tracks, right? I see that. Go across the street, there's my footprints. And I look up and I see the two radio towers. But you know what's in between them? Nothing. Blue sky. Oh. So whatever I saw was in the air above Edwards. Now that's all wow. I can say. That's I, I, I know it sounds like bullshit, but it's not. 
it, no, it, it's, like it, it's crazy... not, especially if it's right over Edwards. It's right over There's Edwards. There's a chance that it could have been the, some experimental. <laughs> and, and it, <laughs> it caught me. Going it, on. The whole thing caught me by surprise. And I had my phone in my hand because of GPS and my location, right? And I did, and it, it happened so quick. It caught me by surprise. And then when it lit up the second time, and then I thought, okay, all right, all right. Now I got to get my, and, and it didn't happen. I, I, I missed the whole thing. I missed mm. it. I missed it. I missed it. All of the, you know, it's so funny when I go, well, did you take a picture? No, I didn't have a chance. Oh, okay. Did you shoot video? No, I, I didn't have a chance. You know, and, and here I am right, with the cell phone in my hand, watching this go down. And it was absolutely insane. It was insane. And I still, when I saw the blue sky in between the radio towers, I, 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 I had an adrenaline rush because I was, yeah. I swear I was expecting a radio tower and this round thing on the top of it. No, not that big of a deal, but no, man, there was nothing there, nothing there. I, somebody at Edwards is uh, listening to me right now going, yeah, he saw it. <laughs> <laughs> He, That's right. He saw our 10 p.m. Like, experiment. Like, yeah, right. They were like, yeah, it, it worked. We got him. We hooked him. It's so funny. Oh, man. All right. Uh, let's uh, let's get down to brass tacks. I've only got a couple of minutes left. Um, you mentioned, uh, John. Oh, I'm actually going to throw this to Jack because I know John's going to give me the political uh, politician answer. Jack, John said earlier that you guys are in rush mode to get this to the Pasadena Film Festival. Um, you're going to get it to them as complete as possible. Um, I, I'm assuming that's going to get pulled off. But I think what John is also saying is the film is not quite done. So is there going to be another version between the film festival and the release date at the end of November? Well, it's just finishing touches. It's, it's really, you know, a lot of times you'll have a festival cut and then after the festival, you usually have a couple months before the release and then you can tweak things and stuff like that. So, and John, I would say, you know, his answer is going to be more specific as to the editing, but, uh, it's almost there. So it's just a question of, there might be little things that need to be done on the back end. Is, Is that accurate, John? Oh, so he gave me the political answer. Jack just handed it <laughs> off. <laughs> so, no, no. Okay. I mean, it's a, it, it's in good shape. I mean, but it's it's there are little things, right? I mean, yeah. there's always little things. Yeah. So, John, you're yeah. you're 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 comfortable enough and you're happy enough uh, where you are now for the the premiere at the film festival. Yeah, and the main reason why is is because who is doing the work, and I know he's listening, Patrick Lomantini, our editor. Uh, he had a little bit of a setback due to an unexpected death in the family, and uh, our our heart was with him the entire process that he went through, the grieving process, and we gave him as much time as he needed, and I think it was important, you know, for that level of support for him and that's life and life is definitely much more important than anything that we're working on. And and we gave him that latitude. So I'm not saying that it put us behind. It just gave us a new deadline to, to shoot for. So I know that Patrick is listening and editing probably as he's listening to this right now. So I appreciate, you know, the effort that he's doing there, but primarily what will happen between the festival cut and the final cut is, is sound. Mm-hmm. will be better. Mm-hmm. There will be additional music cues and some effect sounds that will go in there that most people wouldn't even notice, but I do. And when I listen to the movie or watch the movie with headphones on, it's a sonic explosion. And I love everything that our, our the person who scores our film and does the sound, Anton Patzner, phenomenal. Absolutely. Anybody who has not watched uh, Extraordinary the Seating with headphones on, I encourage you to do it. You will have a completely different experience because of the sound textures that are in there. So th- those are the things that the minutia that goes on, there will be probably some B-roll tweaks that we might make. They'll, you know, there's some compositing things that we do that Patrick is really good at. And I think that's kind of like his signature that will just add to it between the cuts. So Pat- it'll just be a little bit better. Patrick, uh, I hope you're listening. Thank you so much. And the cuts of the film that I have seen, it's one of the first comments that I made to John is, uh, wow, 
right? Wow. And it's only going to get better. And that was back then. And, and, and uh, Patrick, thank you so much for all of your hard work. And Anton, man, right? <laughs> right. Big, 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 big applause uh, to everything that Anton has done sonically uh, to this to this picture. Jack, thank you so much. We're going to be hanging out, guys. Check this out in two weeks in Pasadena. I can't Join us. Believe it. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, I, again, big applause uh, to the both of you, uh, the the three J's, and of course the L uh, for getting this thing done. Thank you so much, and enjoy the rest of your night, John. It's five o'clock in the morning in South Africa, but uh, I'll see you in two weeks, my friend. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Thanks. Jack. Thanks, Jimmy. Thanks, Thank, Thank you, you so much. much, man. Always fun. Bel Air Jack Roth. That's what we call him now. <laughs> Bel Air Jack Roth. Thank you guys so much. The film is extraordinary. The Revelations, the trailer is up at uh, on our YouTube channel. Go and check it out. And I'll get everything that you need to go and check out the film here in Pasadena, September 11th. Thank you, John. Thank you, Jack. Have a great night. Despite popular opinion, reading a book will not make you smarter. But listening to Jimmy Church will. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and I take Life Change Tea supplements every single day. It's what I do. Click on their banner at JimmyChurchRadio.com. This is Jimmy Church, and I invite you to attend the 20th Annual Los Angeles Conscious Life Expo live and in person this September 17th, 18th, and 19th at the LAX Airport Hilton. Connect with exhibitors, community, thought leaders, and friends as we begin to recreate the world. You can also watch the expo from the comfort of your own home. Live stream from the main stage in Los Angeles and from the main stage in London. Truly a global simulcast event broadcast around the world. Live stream and in-person expo tickets are available now. I'll be your host all weekend long from Los Angeles. And on Friday, it's my Ancient Secrets and Earth Mysteries themed segment with James Keenan. Caroline Corey and William Henry. And on Saturday, Daniel Sheen and I sit down for a one-on-one -on -one interview live. We have an amazing lineup of 25 speakers, including Bashar, Gail Thackeray, Kimberly Meredith, Whitley Strieber, Stephen Bassett, Daniel Brinkley, and Lisa Gar. Please visit ConsciousLifeExpo.com for tickets and info. That's ConsciousLifeExpo.com. And use that promo code JIMMY for a special discount. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of fade to black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the fade to black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of fade to black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied, dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. This is Billy Carson with ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. Forbidden Knowledge TV has just reached its one year anniversary. That's right, one year. And as a show of appreciation, we are giving all new subscribers a free 30 day trial of ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. 
That's 30 days to binge watch thousands of movies, documentaries, conferences, workshops, lectures, yoga classes, meditation courses, and so much more. So log on to ForbiddenKnowledge.tv from your computer or mobile device or get the Forbidden Knowledge TV app on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon, iTunes, or Google Play today and use coupon code 30 days free. That's coupon code 30 days free on ForbiddenKnowledge.tv today. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. It's not a lifestyle we chose. We were born this way. KGRARadio.com This is KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com All right, welcome back. Fade to Black, I'm your host, Jimmy Church. John Sumple, Jack Roth, the new film. And uh, again, we've uh, uh, got the trailer up on our YouTube channel. And uh, we did the premiere for that at 6 p.m. Uh, earlier today. You can go and, and check that out. I will post it up if you're listening to me now and you're not over on YouTube. Uh, I will post uh, the links up uh, for everybody uh, in social media where you can go and, uh, check it out. And, uh, uh, the film to, to, for, for me in my own little way, my own, you know, my contribution to the film, uh, is it's just an honor and a privilege and sure. Right. I've always wanted to, uh, to get in on, on a film and, and, and narrate. I didn't know if it would ever happen, but uh, to to be able to do this with this film at this time, uh, it's just insane to me. It's 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 just well, it's cool. But then it's the Pasadena Film Festival, and and to be able to go through all of that, my little life's journey, um, those little bucket list things are are slowly getting checked off, and and I want to thank John. I want to thank. Uh, Jack and the entire team over at uh, J3 and of course uh, Lori Wagner who is uh, such an important cog in the machine and and Lori thank you so much for everything and so there you go it is the Pasadena Film Festival it is going on all week uh, that week of uh, the second week of September but uh, this will be Saturday night September 11th in Pasadena and the specific theater, the location, and the time, I'll get that up in social media. But I want you fader knots to come hang out with me and celebrate and enjoy the moment. Okay? All right. Thank you so much, Jack. Thank you, John, again, for the opportunity. And uh, it is uh, very, very cool. With that, I've opened up the phone line, 747 Lots of developments over the last week. Oh, um... I just wanted to say this to everybody, and I spaced it while uh, Jack and John were on the show. Um, I spoke to Lou Elizondo uh, a couple times today, but I spoke to him right before the show. And I said, dude, I've got to go live in 30 minutes. And he goes, oh, okay, well, one more thing. I'm like, Lou. And he goes, no, Jimmy, one more thing. Uh, tell the fade or not. I said, hello, and all is well. So I'm sharing that uh, with all of you. Okay, all right. With that, let's see. I've uh, put together this new studio. Listening to this echo, see when I talk quiet, see no echo. It's not bouncing off the wall. If I whisper, if I'm down low, 
But if I talk in my normal voice, we get the bounce off the walls. It's pretty trippy. It'll be gone tomorrow, so enjoy it tonight. Uh, let's uh, see who is up first. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. Who's calling? Hey, Jimmy, it's Eric, the Awakening Man. Eric, the Awakening Man. You say the Awakening Man to separate you from all of the other Eric's of the world. And I, I, I appreciate that and respect it because there's a lot of imitators out there. So you need to make sure to the audience that this is yeah. the awakening man. Well done. <laughs> well, you know, there's a lot of great Eric's out there, as you know, uh, they're, they're, they're Eric, the Viking. You got Eric Stitt, uh, Eric Stitt, <laughs> Eric yeah. Stitt. Eric Stitt, he's amazing. He's amazing. Yeah. So, um, uh, what, uh, you know, you know, what's really funny, Eric, and, uh, uh, we'll, we'll ch chat in just a second, but it, it's so funny if we look at the last 10 years and go, wow. Right. And then you go the last five years, the last four years, the last three years, the, the last year, the last three months, the last three weeks, right. It's just been insane. Yeah. I mean, are you, are you talking? Are you want me to respond? <laughs> of course I want you to just like you and I are well, sitting I, I, on my comment, couch. Uh, let me first comment on Jack and John. Cause I, re I, I remember when, uh, when Stan Romanek's film came out and this is when I was first doing my deep dive into the research of ufology. And I was, uh, and I heard him talking on the interview about the process and how long it, it dragged out before they could actually release the film and all the hoops that they had to jump through. And I thought, man, these guys, these guys have courage. They've got guts. Um, so I started following them. And then when I found out that they were coming out with these other films, like they did the, the second one and now the third one, um, these guys are top shelf. And I'm not just saying that cause you just had them on the show from all the research that I've done. If I was going to pick one group of people that, that are putting out content, these are the people that I would select as number one, in my opinion. Yeah, they are a very, very talented group um, that are 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 here for the community, and it, it's it's really true, I incredible, and uh, and Lori Wagner. You know, I, I, the three of us tonight have said her name so much, but um, it it's she her. Most people in the community, um, uh, she prefers to run in the background. She just does. Yeah. And uh, her research and how she put, and her involvement in all of this. And I know about her other projects. And she, she's just amazing. So, yeah, you're right. J3 Films, um, uh, just, just, just top notch, top notch. So thank you for saying that. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? Here's what stands out is they're willing to take it to a level that a lot of these other people that are putting out stuff are, are kind of just touching on, but they, they'll take a deep dive and they're not afraid to put people out there that people may not know about or know a lot about or heard a lot about. But when you get to know these people and you hear their stories and then you have another film after that, and then another film after that, the whole picture starts to become clear that these people are not wackos or yahoos or, or hoaxers in my opinion. I think they're legit and people need to accept that there are legit experiencers out there having these legit experiences. Sure. There's hoaxers out there, but that doesn't, we can't discount the fact that this is a real phenomenon in my opinion. Yeah. I think the hoaxing side of things, uh, well, we're using hoax as a, as a general and broad term, but, uh, uh, people that may make things up, Okay. And, right. And, okay. Yeah. So uh, yeah. there, uh, that does go on, but it, the UFO community is very smart, and they read through things pretty quick, and they have uh, they have their own way of of vetting. You know, uh, should we have a commission, a high commission, right? And 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 everybody gets vetted through the high commission before you are allowed to venture into the UFO community. No. That's not what the UFO community is about. We welcome everybody. Share your story. Share your experience. But if you are BSing, you're gonna get you're gonna get found out, and your journey is 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 very short in the in the UFO community. And and that's look the the sighting that I had three weeks ago. 
I didn't have that with anybody. There wasn't somebody there to uh, corroborate or or back up or or whatever or to support. That's not there. It's only my experience and my own, and I didn't. T- but it was absolutely nuts. And what do we do with that? Well, it's the same thing with anybody else. You know, if they have a sighting and they've seen something, well, okay, all right, we need to uh, 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 listen to everybody. Just like my, I, 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 di- I didn't, I didn't video, I didn't take a picture. It's just a story, but it's my reality, and it, and it happened. So there you go. All right. So what's on your mind, Eric? No, well, a lot of things. I'm, I'm psyched that you got uh, Angelie on on Wednesday because I mean. Uh... I'm, I'm just observing everything after she did her press conference and I'm watching her on Twitter and I'm watching how she's interacting with people and how people are testing her to see if they could, you know, get, get ruffle her feathers or whatever. But she's very poised and professional on how she responds and reacts to people's comments. And I, so I respect that. I'm really looking forward to your interview because there's a lot of questions that I would like to ask her that I'm sure you're going to ask her. So now you're, you're, <laughs> I'm just, I, I think that, uh, because the bottom line is this. She's saying that something's going to go down here this year is what she said. So, I mean, this isn't something that's going to get dragged out for two or three years. We're going to – she's – I'm getting the impression that something – we're going to know one way or the other what's going on here probably in the next six months. That's exciting to me. There is um, – uh, she, for me, is a little bit different. Eric, uh, uh, stay right there for a second. Just stay right there. Yeah. Um, uh, I have to uh, uh, silence and, and, and get rid of something really quick. All right. I'm, I'm, here. I'm doing that here. Okay. All right. Now let's uh, get Eric back on the line. Eric, um, uh, check this out. Uh, when it comes to Anjali, um, I have uh, I have her her background and her work history. And, and you look at this and I don't, uh, we're going to be discussing this on, on Wednesday night, but I want everybody to, to listen to this. Okay. So currently, uh, 2017, 2021 human factors, intelligence, human factors, intelligence consultant. Now, what does that mean? Well, let's back up from 2015 to 2016. She worked for a um, at caught my government services, social media and open source intelligence instructor at the Marine Corps air ground combat center in 29 palms. Now, what does that mean? All right, let's back up her overall, um, description of her, uh, of her employment. She describes, uh, this is, this is right here. It says information. Information operations, IO, information warfare, IW, intelligence expert for Anson and Sockman um, SME, human factors profiler, international security affairs for Russia, Mina, Nessa, global dark and deep web exploitation. Okay, now let me continue. Um, from 2006 to 2009, she worked for BAE Systems, a lead intelligence analyst, global analysis for the Defense Intelligence Agency. Then before that, Defense Ooh. Intelligence Agency. She was an intelligence liaison officer, executive support office, J2, J3, at the Pentagon from 2005 to 2006. Uh, before that, lead, team lead, human factors leadership, defense intelligence agency, director, interagency, country review project from 2000. That was uh, throughout 2005. Before that, lead intelligence officer, information operations, information warfare, IOIW, 2004 to 2005 in Washington, D.C., now, um, and uh, she was in the Air Force uh, before that. And there's some more information here. Now, this is the deal. When you present a CV of your employment history that says these things in it, this is vetable and actionable information. 
So when we talk about people that have surfaced in the past that have said they did this or they did that without any anything to back it up, well, um, Anjali is is giving all of this up front. And in her... Um, now, I'm not saying I'm, I'm backing any of this. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying for us as a community, right. we have something here to to look into and it's actionable right there's a place to go there's things to research here but in her press conference she gave all of her aliases right all of her previous names yeah. all of her current names and spelled them out uh to allow anybody to go and look into her background and that yeah. uh with um uh with most uh that have surfaced and that includes lou elizondo and and when I look at, you know, Lou has given us his background, right? And has laid it all out there for us to go see his, his background. Um, and can I cut you off real quick? Well, but no, let me say this, that with, all right. with her list of where she was and what she, it, it, it's, it's pretty strong. I'm wondering if she ever bumped into Lou in the halls of the Pentagon. You know, or well, there... that's exactly what I was just going to ask you, actually. <laughs> right. Can you reveal any conversations that you've had with Lou privately that wouldn't be, uh, you know, compromising to your friendship as far as what's his take or what, what if, if he thinks that, OK, there's a chance here this could be legit or maybe it's a double reverse psyop or whatever. I mean, it's one or the other. It's either legit or it's a psyop. I mean, there's no in between here. Sure. And I will leave that uh, to Lou. Uh, my short okay. answer is no, I would never uh, discuss any private conversations. But Lou, if he's got something to say, or if uh, Anjali has got something to say on this, we'll find out on Wednesday. Only in that uh, the intelligence community, to me, um, you know, the Pentagon, the Defense and, uh, Intelligence Agency, it, it's big, but it's also small, right? Where everybody yeah. kind of knows everybody. So we'll see. I mean, I just find that part interesting that she absolutely chose to lay out her entire life to everybody. And if you just want to go and check it out, that's it. The other part to this, um, and this is what I find very interesting, Eric, and it involves you. The Mojave incident. Right Correct. now, yeah. you know, and if we go back uh, to Ron Felber and his book, The Mojave Incident, and and the Hesses who were on Fade to Black and and uh, and and so forth, the the amount of uh, research that I did into the Mojave Desert, the Mojave Incident, and uh, those great shows that we did uh, uh, with Felber and the Hesses back then. That is the Mojave incident part of this thing. You know, is it related? Is it connected? Is it in the area where this uh, underground ET base is that she says that she has been to and she's going to return to with this team of scientists and intellectuals? Um, I, I, I Did that surprise you? And did you immediately think of the Hesses? And, and Felber's I book. Did. I did that. But here's what I also thought of immediately is that their experience did not sound to be like the same kind of people that Anjali uh, was able to meet. Apparently uh, it sounded like Anjali had a very positive experience in the sense that what, whoever those people are that she says that she met uh, sound like they're going to try to help humanity or something along those lines where it's, it's whereas the Hesses, uh, I mean, it, it scared the hell out of them. And, and so <laughs> But I, I just want to make one quick comment for anyone that's listening is, uh, and Jimmy, you know this, and, and like you just mentioned about your Edwards uh, sighting that, you know, it's, you had it alone. So you tell the story and that's it. What do you do? You don't got to, you have no pictures. But to this day, the best sighting that I've ever had, and you've seen some of the videos that I've shot when I was, when I've been with people and have had, and had sightings, but when I was at Kelbecker Road, seven miles off the Highway 40 uh, in the Mojave Desert National Preserve over there by the Granite Mountains, and I saw that 40 foot chrome spear. Uh, hovering over that tower that was a hundred yards away from me. And, and that moment that removed all doubt that we are not alone because there's, unless that was some sort of holographic projection that was put up for me to see for some reason, right? Either way, that would be a mind blower too. But the point I'm trying to make is you and I talked about this just a few days ago that 
there's a very high, highly probable chance that there's some sort of a ET type race or non-human type race that's, that's in the Mojave desert. I believe that. I believe it. Am I not it? I'm all in. I told you that. I'm 90% in, 90 95%. Well, uh, the, the Mojave Desert, and if you look at it on a map, um, and this, I'm going to bring up Lori Wagner one more time. She sent me a, a map of the Mojave <laughs> Desert yesterday. and It's massive. It's, <laughs> it, it goes from uh, Lancaster, Palmdale, Edwards Air Force Base, right? Lockheed, Skunk Works, mm -hmm. all of that, <laughs> all the way to Nevada, deep into Nevada. And, right. and it goes way far north. It is a big, huge chunk of land. Now, there's a few cities, a few towns that are in there. The yeah. majority of the Mojave Desert is just that, desert. There, right. there is the 99% of the Mojave Desert no humans have set foot on. And that's, that's yeah. the truth. Um, and so I could see... Not only do I understand the Mojave incident as the Hesses um, have recounted and, and, and told us their story, but if there is going to be something secret, you know, and it, it goes to China Lake and, and Area 51 and, and it just on and on and on and on that that is, it's a remote area. And, and if you want to uh, do something with, think of Giant Rock, right? And, and yeah. we could just go on yeah, and on. There you go. Yes, yes. I mean, you know, Angeli might have run into some leftovers from the Venusians, maybe. Who knows? Well, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I've, uh, uh, I watched her press conference. I've, I've spoken to her. Okay, um, I'm very intrigued. Um, but yeah. if you are going to uh, lay out your your complete work history, your education, everything else, and your name and your aliases, uh, you know, a former name, whatever, right? Your other names, um, and and put it out there, and then specifically say, I've been to this base. I'm going to go back with this team, and we're going to do it before the end of 2021. Well, we're sitting at the end of August. We're going into September. There's only so many months left. So this is this is pretty interesting, and could this? Hey, let me let me run this by you real quick. What if this turns into? And I'm I'm just joking here, but not really. What if this turns into a Geraldo Rivera moment where they put the team together, they go out to Wayne's property, they get into the cave, they go in the cave, they're looking, and they're not there. Well, they're they're not there. Where'd they go? I mean, that could happen too. That Al, would be interesting. What was that? Al Capone's vault. Yeah, Al Capone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, uh, look, uh, expect the worst and take what comes, right? Yeah. You know, and, and I think that's the only way to look at it. But I'm very excited. It's going to be. And uh, I think uh, Angelique should bring you. I really, I think that that's something that uh, you should be uh, leveraging for immediately, if not sooner. Well, we'll and see. I'll, 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 I'll co-sign that petition. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be great. And, uh, uh, this is her first time, uh, going on, uh, you know, a big time show and, and for her to, uh, to step up and, and go through it. Look, we're just going to have another show, another conversation like we do with every yeah. guest. I'm very intrigued. Yeah. I'm very interested. And I hope that, uh, this, this whole thing plays out and, and it, we have a, 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 a great conclusion to this. You know, I was, um, speaking uh, to Richard Dolan about this yesterday. I'm not name dropping, but, uh, yeah. I, you know, and I said, so what do you think? And he goes, you know what, man, uh, this could be it, you know, and, and, and why not? Why not? Yeah. Why you know, not? why not? So let's, uh, let's go. So he's, he's the same mindset that I have, which is, uh, let's listen. Um, let's, uh, let's go through this together and let's see what happens. And, and there you go. And one, and one more thing I want to say is I'm going to bet you right now that in your conversation Wednesday, it's going to be revealed because you're going to ask her that she has had experiences prior to these, exp I'm, I'm childhood, whatever. I mean, I'm just going to speculate now that this was not her first rodeo. Thank you so okay. much, Eric. And everybody that was on hold, uh, man, it's just the way that it goes. But 
we will have open lines tomorrow night too as well. Thank you so much, Eric. Have a great night, my friend. What a great way to kick off the week here on Fade to Black. I want to thank, I almost said Ron Felworth. Uh, John Sumpel and Jack Roth, the team over at J3 Films. And uh, again, you can check out the trailer right now over on our YouTube channel. Fade to Black is produced by Hill J. Paul and Renee, Dennis and Kevin. Announcers are Steve Harder, Gene Vitoa, Mark D. Kovar. Webmaster is Drew the Geek. Music, Doug Aldrich. Intro, Space Boy, spaceboymusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network. And syndication is KGRA, The Planet. This broadcast is only copyrighted 2021 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network, Inc. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black or the Game Changer Network. Tomorrow night, right here, Scott Walter. Our meals, Jimmy Church. Until tomorrow night, everybody be safe. It's time to fade to black.